Hello everyone, welcome to Ask a Scientist Gaming, where we combine mediocre gameplay with expert level science. I'm Ken Hansen, I'm Associate Professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Florida State University. I'm a molecular photophysicist slash chemist. I care about all things light molecule interactions and their application. But more importantly, joining me today is Professor Scott Stagg. Scott, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Hi, uh, thanks for having me, Ken. I am Scott Stagg. I'm also a professor at FSU. Um, I'm interested in structural biology and that what that means is uh, I use um, biophysical tools to determine the structures of uh, the molecules in the cell and try to figure out how they work. We know what they do, but we don't know how they do it. And so I use a te particular technique called cryogenic electron microscopy to, to, to determine these structures. And yeah, I've been there, been here, what, like 13 years, something like that. Yeah, it's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here eight now. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Time flies. I know. Both of us are a little grayer. <laughs> I'm more than a little. <laughs> I have a lot of white hairs at this point. Yeah. All right. Equally important. What game are we playing tonight? We are playing Mario Kart 8. 8, right? Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Mario Kart 8. All right, let's do it. Fired up? Okay. Yeah, so. we won't start hammering you with questions till you have time to relax a little okay, bit. Okay, okay. Get into a groove with Mario Kart. Well, I, I think I'll start. Um, I'm going to challenge myself with the 150cc. I like it. And um, this is a cart my son made, so it's probably good. <laughs> And I'm just going to go for it. So I haven't actually built cars in this. What can you, you can choose wheels and. Frames. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Like mm. each, each, um, cart and character and wheels have a whole set of characteristics. Um, and so, and it really changes how, 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 how fast you are and you slide and all that stuff. They so, have good physics. So Bronco has a good point here. This is officially the best graphics we've had on stream so far, <laughs> other than maybe Mario Maker, but I'd argue this is better than Mario Maker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, but don't worry, we are going to get to the retro games that are, <laughs> the, I, I looked at, you know, some of the other games that had been played before. And so my go-tos had already been played before and I thought it'd be good to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. I like it. Some high quality graphics. Alright, so you're you're in a groove at this point. You've been playing for five seconds. Absolutely. But, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll start with an easy one. Okay. So I can go to Amazon and I can buy a microscope and that's an optical microscope. Correct. It uses the transmission or reflection of photons of light to see imaging. But you do an electron microscopy. So yeah. why electrons and what what is it? Okay, so um, the um, the resolution on a microscope is limited by the wavelength of the particle that you're using to uh, to make the images, and um, electrons have an incredibly small wavelength, so smaller than um, you know, very much smaller than an angstrom, and so you can use electrons to visualize things at uh, atomic resolution and um, it works just like uh, a light microscope the principles are the same um, you have a gun uh, instead of a photon gun you have an electron gun and it shoots down a column um, and um, interacts with the sample and instead of um, having uh, like glass lenses, we have electromagnetic lenses um, because there is no glass that will bend electrons, right? That's how you have to, that's how you magnify stuff is by bending, um, bending the, 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 the particles, the, the stream of particles, right? So we use electromag electromagnetic lenses and, um, Which sounds way fancier than it is, because that's how the CRT TVs used to work. Right, it right, used right. An electric field to beam ele or direct electrons. Exactly. Yeah. Um, doing it very accurately. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like steering an electron with a magnet, mm -hmm. um, and you can use it to form an image. Yeah, and um, so yeah, so the, so then we there's a couple forms of electron microscopy. I do transmission electron microscopy um, so which and that's sort of like an x-ray right so a lot of people are familiar with like scanning electron microscopes like if you've ever seen pictures of like really high magnification beautiful pictures of like insects like bug eye stuff that's scanning electron microscopy and that's where you see the surface features of um, of, of things but with TEM you it's more like an x-ray 
So you see the insides just as well as the outsides. And the cool thing about that is we can determine the structures of whole molecules, right? We can see the atoms on the inside just as well as the outside. And that's why we use it to um, determine structures of biomolecules. So Calm Down Bronco has a, a good follow-up question. So you can use X-ray crystallography to solve a protein structure, right? Uh, what's the advantage of using cryogenic electron microscopy? Ah, Maybe there, start with what cryogenic electron microscopy is. I will. So um, cryogenic electron microscopy, all it means is we're doing transmission electron microscopy, but we're using a sample that's in its near native state by freezing it in, in water, right? So we, it, we freeze the, the particle, the specimen so quickly that instead of forming crystalline ice, it makes like this gel, right? It doesn't, it doesn't make all the crystal contacts to make you know, no, normal ice, it makes this gel. Um, which means when we put it in the electron microscope, we, uh, the, the, the water is essentially invisible. Okay, so that's the cryo part. The question was why cryo-EM and um, not x-ray crystallography? So, with x-ray crystallography, you, you have to get the thing that you're interested in looking at to form a crystal, like, you know, table salt is a crystal. So if you want to study a, a protein structure, you have to get it to crystallize. And that's hard. That's like really hard a lot of times. Um, but with cryo-EM, since we're just taking images and we can see the, the proteins, the particles themselves, we don't need to get them to crystallize. Um, and so that's the major advantage uh, is, you know, we get, we have atomic resolution from the microscope and we don't have to have the, the, the specimen that we're interested in looking at crystallize. So the other one, correct me if I'm wrong, is that when you grow a crystal of a protein, it's not necessarily the same as it would be in water, right? So like you're freezing it in place more than... Uh, for the most part, when you crystallize uh, a protein, it is very close to is what it, it really? would be. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, um, there, are, there are actually a lot of advantages that cryo-EM has over x-ray crystallography um one uh so, so not crystallizing is, is a big one but since we're taking pictures um we can sort out all the different states that our molecule of interest might be in so one of the things we love with em is um the ribosome right the ribosome is the molecule that makes proteins like all our proteins in nature they're made by ribosomes and they're these really cool molecular machines. Oh, sniped. Two in um, a row, well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> random. Uh, no, uh, no, on point, well done. Uh, yeah, absolutely not <laughs> random, that's right. Um, uh, and um, so, you know, you can, with EM, you can capture ribosomes in that process of making proteins and you can so you get the, all these different pictures of the ribosomes in different states and sort them out so you don't get one structure you can get dozens from one sample which is really exciting and in fact for the it, tech uh, um, cryo-EM has become pretty much the technique of choice when you're studying um, larger protein kind of structures yeah Makes sense. So the, so the cryogenic aspect. So I, a couple streams ago, we were talking about freezing um, Walt Disney's head. Yeah, right? okay. <laughs> bringing it back to life. So what's special about your freezing that doesn't grow crystals? Okay. So um, what we do is we put a couple of microliters of our, our sample. Um, that's ten to the sixth of a liter. My, no, minus six. Ten to the minus six of a liter onto an EM grid, which is like a millimeter across. And then we take filter paper and we blot it, right? So we blot it away. So there's a layer of molecules, one molecule thick, embedded in, in solvent, right? So one molecule thick. 
and then immediately plunge that into liquid ethane. And so what the liquid ethane does is it freezes it so fast that the crystalline ice can't form. And you can't do that, and it only works because it's so thin, yeah. right? So you couldn't do that with Walt Disney's head <laughs> because, you well, know, it's big. Unless you slice it up. Right, and yeah, then freeze slice it, it up. And then... So our, <laughs> our limit is about one to three microns thick to get vitreous ice. And you can get bigger, thicker than that, but you have to use a special thing called a high-pressure freezer. Why? It's a whole different thing. Why, why ethane? Why not liquid nitrogen? Why not liquid nitrogen? Because if you have ever Oh, perturbs used... and bubbles probably, right? Exactly. Yeah. If you've ever used liquid nitrogen, you can like pour it on your hand. It doesn't hurt, right? Because it's bubbling. It's it's boiling. Leiden frost effect. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so, so liquid nitrogen doesn't freeze it fast enough. But we do use liquid nitrogen to make, to the... make the liquid ethane. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's really cool. All right. Uh, DBPHD wants to know, what advice do you have for crystallographers looking to broaden their skill set? Can I answer for you? <laughs> you learn cryoium? Yeah, learn cryo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's, answer. Uh, that's, that, that's certainly a good thing. Well, so... The, I mean, so it's, a, it's an exploding the, field, right? It's, it's that's a, right. And the, the, um, the really good news is that the skills and the knowledge set is transferable totally between uh, crystallography and cryo-EM. If you are a good uh, X-ray crystallographer, you'll make a good electron microscopist. Um, but, you know, so, you know, there's a lot of people in the EM field who are like, yeah, EM's taken over, you know, no more crystallography, we can do it all. But I, I don't subscribe to that. Um, there's certain things that crystallography will always be better at. One of them is resolution. Um, you know, if you can get your protein or whatever to crystallize, um, well, there's a lot of the processing that you don't have to do that causes losses of resolution. It's fairly technical, but you can you can get better resolution typically uh, with with X-ray crystallography than you can with the EM. So like, oh, sorry. Some of those like catalytic centers, like there's debates on whether it was like iron or manganese or something. Like, can you oh, evolve stuff thing. like that? You can, but um, it's ambiguous what the, um, what the ion is, what the metal is. Like we can see there's a thing if we get to high enough resolution, which is not that common yeah. yet. Um, but yeah, we can, you know, if you get to, three-ish angstrom's resolution, you're going to start seeing that stuff, um, waters, things like that. But they're just little spheres, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of deduce what they are. And um, with crystallography, and I'm not a crystallography, a crystallographer, um, but I, I, I believe that it's easier to figure out oof, what, what the... the atoms are than uh with EM. so i think they still have some debate right because they rely on bond yeah. distances right and if the oxidation bond stays different, but also the scattering right yeah. so the um you know that's how they determine phases yeah. the how heavy atoms uh scatter like uh, like x-rays differently than the lighter atoms that makes sense um, best tool for the job sort of argument, yes. <laughs> yeah, best tool for the job. And, and exactly. Anyone that so, tells you they have an all-purpose solution to anything in science is full of shit. There's <laughs> always, there's other options. There's Right. <laughs> With that said, NMR took over organic chemistry, so. <laughs> so it goes. Yeah. Ooh, how plausible would learning cryo-EM be if I'm not planning to be a structural biologist? Should I try to make friends with one and collaborate instead? Um, so, uh, depends on what you mean by learn it. So I'm, I'm just gonna guess here and the, the asker can correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm guessing this is someone who's done some biochemistry, right? Done some, uh, looked at structures, maybe interested in molecules. 
And so, um, the most important parts of cryo EM, truly the most important is specimen preparation, right? So, uh, if you, if you're, you know, really good at specimen preparation and, um, you know, good protein biochemistry, you're 80% of the way there. Then learning the technical part, um, there are now these days, these national centers like the, you know, the NIH has funded three of these, um, whose entire mandate is just service, right? Um, they do training, they do data collection. Um, the thing they don't do is screening, but you know, that, that is possible to, to get without having an electron microscope. Well, well, so what, is, what does screening mean in this? Screening means the, figuring out how good your sample is, the quality. Um, so anyway, uh, what I'm, the, the, the take home message is you don't have to have an elect, uh, a cryoem to be able to do it these days because there's so many resources available. It is a lot easier if you do have the resources locally, but it's not required. And there's, you know, like this, you know, there's so many things, so, so many online resources these days. You could learn every aspect of cryoem without actually ever doing it. Um, but, um, you know, things are a lot easier if you're surrounded with, by the people who do it. And yeah, the, the art aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, right? exactly. Wants the, you know, you just can't write down. It, exactly. It, it doesn't even show up in papers. So there's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, you know, I still learn stuff when I'm, you know, chatting with my, with my buddies, you know, stuff that I hadn't even thought about. Mario Kart has some of the hardest rubber banding in video gaming. Will you explain what that. rubber banding is? So, <laughs> so Nintendo is very good at making games that are fun. So yeah. if you're in last place, all of a sudden you turn into a ah. bullet and you're in third. Right? Yes. And so they call that rubber banding. And so if you're in first, you get hit with a blue shell. So they like they like use a rubber band to squeeze everyone together. Right, and right, right. What I'd really love to see is if they made a Mario Kart game that was like hardcore racing, uh -huh. you know, where you didn't bias the outcomes. And I think you can set up a custom game. Oh, you can. So yeah, you have yeah, awesome. yeah. Of where you, uh, I'm, I'm like ninety nine percent sure you can make it totally fair, legit that, fair. That's awesome. I mean, like I want, if you're playing with your buddies, you could do that. I want to see like an eSport Mario Kart hardcore oh, racing. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll bet it exists. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. I think if you had the online account, you could go and play and get crushed by <laughs> yeah, eight-year-olds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just just play F-Zero. So. Do you ever play F-Zero for the Sega? What is F-Zero? Is that a, ra it's a, a racing, racing game? game? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like yeah. F-1 minus one? <laughs> yeah, F-Zero, yep. Zero gravity. They're floating and um, super futuristic. I see. <laughs> I was hoping it would be like a, a programming joke, too. No, no. Yeah. Steve Leonard yeah. played F-Zero last night, um, actually. So kind of a fun game. A message to Nintendo, give us F-Zero. <laughs> I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, it's a spectacular game. All right. So did you beat? You took the win? I, didn't I have no beat. idea. Uh, uh, maybe I did. Did anyone see it? I was in seventh in one of the races. I saw that. So 200cc. How well, yeah, I'm gonna, let's, let's, let's really challenge me. How confident are you about this win? Because we can do a prediction right now. I am 25% confident that I will get first place <laughs> overall all right oh so we're doing the full 200 cc will scott win uh scott uh what do we call this it's not a race it's a series yeah the full series and you're doing the mushroom cup oh sure might as well do the first one all right time to spend some internet points we're gonna bet on whether scott is gonna win this series so before you press start they have two minutes um, so anyone just joining us, it's not following, click follow, get your 300 standard internet units. You can spend them on useless things on the internet, um, but you can also make a prediction on whether Scott is going to win this series. I will also take suggestions on my cart Ooh. if you, if you would like. Does anyone have strong opinions on what car he should pick or what character? Because the characters drive differently on this. Totally. Right? Yeah. They have different weights. So we'll let, all right. Bet your internet points. Make your predictions uh -oh. now. Uh 
<laughs> do you want to know what they're betting before you go or do you not want that pressure on you? Oh, I'd love to know. <laughs> All right. Betting against right. You guys have about a minute. Dan <laughs> 94%. Yeah. Daniel Hooker Art, thank you for the following. Spend your internet points right now. Will Scott win this series? Yes or no? <laughs> Bet now. So this is 200 CC. You're 25% confident. <laughs> there are a healthy number of doubters. Wise. Uh, oh, Scott's bought Wotus Redeem. Take a drink, Scott. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for coming by. This is our first in person Ask Scientist Gaming in like a year now. So, Scott, thank you. Um, Alex well, Rob also. Truly, thank you. Uh, um, thank you for in inviting me. This is, this is so cool that you do this. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I would do this regardless of audience. So, yes. Um, you should tell them what we're drinking. We this are drinking, drinking a, a Saison. I'm not sure if I pronounce that properly, but it's a Belgian beer. Belgian beers are by far my favorite and balanced. And uh, it's a particular style of Belgian beer. Um, it's very easy drinking. Later, we're going for a triple. And uh, it's a little, little stiffer. <laughs> a little, it's nine percent. What was that one? Yeah, I think it's nine percent. Oof. It's a sipping beer. All right, so time is up. So we have four people say yes, you will what? win. Three people say no. All we right. Have... Well, yes, sir. Uh, yes, folks. I'll, I'll try. <laughs> Believers, they put their money where their mouth is. All right, Scott, don't let them down. <laughs> it's a mushroom cup. <laughs> no pressure. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna catch up on some questions here. Sorry, I gotta copy and paste. I promise I will get to you guys. If I miss your questions, just put them in again. All right. This is 200 CC? 200 CC. Ooh, Reese's Pieces had card advice that we ignored. Oh, sorry, Reese's Pieces. Low speed, the speed is too high. You don't need a fast card. Control is better. True. Especially with the rubber banding. Tribal Luminescence is here. That's awesome. That is uh, Steve Leonard. All right, hey Steve. <laughs> All right, let's catch up on some questions. When you are working with your sample, how do you determine when to call it uh, to move on re regarding solving the structure? Like, do you give up on structures? Oh, giving up is so hard. <laughs> Um, sunk cost fallacy. Uh, the sunk cost fallacy, <laughs> truly. Um, so, uh, you know, I always try to make lemons from lemonade um, and try to have no wasted data because you can always sort of make a story even if there's, you know, you don't have great structure. Um, but, uh, you know, we throw the book at it you know we try we, we try to ever try everything and then if it's just not getting any better then um we make the decision should we um you know is it likely to improve this is the question so is any f further experiment likely to improve your understanding of the molecule right like let's say you're at 10 angstroms resolution and to make that next big step in understanding you'd have to be at three angstroms resolution that's a big jump so so you try to um evaluate how likely you might be to to make that jump and if it's low then publish publish what you got that's my advice that, that resolution, so I have a question about the resolution issue. So, so when I think about small molecule X-ray, which is way more well-defined than big protein crystals, you talk about like one 1 1.5 angstrom resolution. What do you typically get for a X-ray protein uh, resolution? At, at one, so with X-ray, it's a little different because you have to get to a certain resolution before you can actually you solve it. Yeah, solve it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's like. Probably three angstroms, maybe a little better. Mm. Makes sense. Uh, Calm Down Bronco wants to know, outside of Rosalind Franklin, who are some of the un unsung heroes of structural biology field? Whoa, good question. <laughs> uh, unsung heroes. Scott Stagg. Um, <laughs> no. Scott Stagg, the unsung hero. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, 
Although I think Rosalind Franklin's getting her due. Yeah, um, I, think, I think she's won history. Yeah, right? like, definitely. No question. I mean, it, at the time, it's clear that she was not getting credit she was deserved. Anyway, okay, so in structural biology. Well, so um, major milestones like solving what hemoglobin was the first crystal structure. Crystal, yeah, and that that got a Nobel Prize. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, there's major oof. Nobel prizes for. Yeah, and for Carl E.M. as well. And oh, I'll give I'll give one. A uh, little shout out to our my FSU colleague uh, Ken Taylor. So, um, Ken and Robert and Bob Glazer's lab. Um, was the first person to prepare a sample, a cryogenic uh, sample. So he's the first person to actually do cryo EM. Um, and uh, he, so Bob Glazer, his advisor at the time, um, was n did not get the Nobel Prize, the um, Nobel Prize for the specimen preparation part, went to actually one of my heroes. He's great. Um, Jacques Dubouchet, right? So he, he did the, uh, um, his Nobel was for the, the specimen preparation part of cryo-EM. Um, so, I, you know, I think a lot of people know that, but it, it's worth noting that um, it's a really important thing that he did. Bob Glazer too. I mean, Bob Glazer is just—he's—he's he's great. I don't know that he's an unsung hero, but he—we deserve to sing about him. <laughs> or he deserves to be sung about, I should say. I just want to point out for the believers, Scott won the first race. <laughs> so second race. Second race. What happened to the first? I think I got third. Third. Okay. Yeah. Where are you sitting now? I don't know. We'll find out. Unsung heroes is such a. It's a hard thing, right? It is a hard to, to thing. To break into the popular culture compendium and as yeah. a scientist is yeah. like Einstein, Newt, Franklin, you know? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Harry Gray is the most famous inorganic chemist no one has ever heard. Uh -huh. right? But everyone in our field, <laughs> right. you know him, the, right? yeah, 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 exactly. So, so like, unsung on which chorus of thing, yeah. right? Is it the scientists? Because I think we kind of know things, but yeah. How do you feel about the uh, the, the quasi-crystal, I guess that's more of an x-ray thing, but solving structures that are not periodic, but kind of periodic? I guess uh, I thought that uh, I mean, I th I'm familiar with it, and it's, it's definitely interesting. Because um, he was ostracized for years. Like, how can you have a repeating pattern with yeah. pentagons, right? It's right, not right, right. Possible. But he went out in the long run too. Yeah, exactly. And it's so, you know, it's so hard to wrap your head around it, <laughs> but it's really cool. I agree. All right, Tribal Luminescence wants to know how big is an electron? Depends on how fast <laughs> it's going. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's a Ken question. <laughs> I, I, I don't know the numerical answer to that. Yeah. It's, it's a wave and a particle, so Let's I don't know Google if you it. can say that. <laughs> right? Uh, diffracts, but all less than an angle, uh, less than an atom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's such a weird thing because the wave particle duality it exists in a space, so yeah. You can't necessarily define a volume, but if you shoot it at a target and you're watching it, you can kind of a yeah, weird, weird wave particle duality, indeed. A student asked me once, and I've been pondering it ever since. <laughs> we all have. Because the electron does not have a definitive volume, especially when it's that size. All right. Reese's Pieces has a very important scientific question. Which Mario character would make the best co-author? Best co Which one would be least likely to fuss about author order? Uh, Which one would respond to emails? Luigi. Yeah. <laughs> Luigi. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is Luigi. I think he he wouldn't. I think we you might know. need to clip that. Luigi is the best co-author. Yeah. <laughs> I think he wouldn't worry about being first author. Yeah. He would be like, you know, let's just do the science. 
Luigi. Who would be the worst co-author? Probably Bowser, right? <laughs> Might be like... Or Wario. <laughs> Wario or what, Luigi. Yeah. Right. Because like, they're like chaotic evil. Like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I didn't win. Oh, is that the last race? But maybe an aggregate? One no, more. no, I got one, one more. more. I think you have to win this to take it, though. Maybe so. Is this... I don't... I don't know the races on this one. Never played it. I've seen it. This one has tight turns. And you gotta do well at the tight turns to... Alright. Uh, Tribal Luminescence wants to know, besides bilayers, what other structures can lipids make? Can I do um, one of my uh, uh, factoids? Mm -hmm. can, I, can I use it? Or... Oh, man. Tribal Luminescence, do you want to spend your internet points on a request a factoid? Because Scott is itching to use one of those. It's related. Actually, I can do it. I have an infinite amount. So, ask a scientist gaming redeemed request a factoid. Okay. Um, I want to talk about the mRNA vaccines. And the unsung hero of those is the lipids. And it's Remar it's one of the coolest things that I've learned about in a few years. So, um, the mRNA part of the vaccines, it's sort of, it's very straightforward, right? You, you make an mRNA against the, the, the spike protein, and then if you can make, get the cells to make that protein, then you can get an immune response. But how do you get that mRNA in the cell? So, the, um, there are these lipid nanoparticles oh no um that uh the pharmaceutical companies have been working on forever and their whole job is getting stuff inside the cell and so the really cool part is they made they discovered that positively charged lipids which don't exist in nature and are super crazy toxic um if you um, make ionizable positively charged uh, lipids, then you can package mRNA. Ooh, shortcut, nice. And um, get it, so, and, and, and that will allow it to be taken up into the, Oh, wow. Um, get it to, to uh, oh, I might, I might've done it. Holy crap, Daisy took third. But it wasn't it? enough. I think I'm first overall. Sorry to pause the science. We have an important moment ahead of us. I think you did it, right? That was the totals. I wasn't think it? so. <laughs> so. We're gonna do a replay. Uh, I did it. Wow. I'd like to thank all my believers. <laughs> believers. Um, Thank you for all will, your support. Will Scott win the series of 200 CC? Made, you know, the, is, the, yes. The, 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 the fifth player, or whatever you, the, the sports people say, it's really made the difference. Yeah. Thank the fans. The fans <laughs> your yeah. cheering really drove me to the end. Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. It's your drink. Do you need another one? I've, I've, I've got half so. All right. So, the so lipids, right? So, these um, ionizable lipids which are super crazy cool. So they figured out that if, they, if you get um, this certain lipid, at, at, uh, you, you can make it have positive charge at low pH, and you do that when you're forming this particle, and that will package the mRNA. And then you put it back in solution, normal, uh, so neutral pH, and, it's n and then it becomes neutral again, so non-toxic. Then um, the cells will see that, you, you know, inject it in person, the cells will see it and take it up by endocytosis, um, like it's just a normal particle. Then it will go to the endosomes, and then endosomes have lower pH, right? So this, this compartment inside the cell has low pH, which again, charges the lipid. So it gets that, that positive charge, and what that positive charge is, is it busts open membranes. And so now, the RNA is released into the cell, so it can now start making the the viral spike proteins, right? But the the the, cell, the pH of the cell is more like neutral, so it becomes uncharged again. And it's it, it's it's uh, so cool 
that they figured this out. One, because now we can you know sit next to each other and That's be vaccinated. True. And two, because it like opens up so many possibilities for um, mRNA. Back, yeah, yeah, mRNA. Yeah, yeah. It's so exciting. I saw they're in phase one of just H. What is it? Uh, HIV and common flu mRNA vaccines. I, it, I don't it, doubt it. It's exploding. Expl and then you know, there's things like, um, like uh, 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 oh, what's the um, see cystic fibrosis? Excuse me, cystic fibrosis, right? And it's just one little protein that if you can make, get it to make that protein and get it to the surface of the cells and in your, in your um, and, and lungs and other and your, your intestines, then you're fine, right? Like that's a treatment or that's preventive. Well, it makes me it makes me think that, that that would be one of a major target. I don't know if it is. Wow. But as soon as I learned about these lipid nanoparticles, I'm like, oh my god, there's so many things, so <laughs> many things. You can maybe have treatment, and complete cures. So the easy answer would have been soap bubbles, but the awesome <laughs> answer is vaccines, MRA. <laughs> yes, I like it. All right, uh, Hamsterlicious, thank you for the bits. Thank you for the cheer. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Reese's Pieces requested take a drink. Okay. So cheers, cheers, Scott, again. again. Pleasure. Congratulations. That was a tight victory. Uh, you definitely you. earned that one. So, all right, 836, probably do another one. Sure. Might as well. Got several games to go through, but I think the other ones are going to be a little bit shorter. All right, so cheers to that. Um, with that, let's put a science prediction up there. Let's uh, row up um, if you took all human DNA. All right, prediction is up. You guys have two minutes. The, the question is, let me pop this up so I can see what you guys see. Um, if you took all the DNA in a human and stretched it out so it's linear, how long would it be? Would it be to the moon and back or beyond Pluto? That is, that is a very wide range of distances. What's the order of magnitude difference between those? That's like six oh, orders of magnitude. <laughs> yeah. huge. I'm going right. with a crazy card. You took all the DNA in a human and stretched it out as long as it could go. And this is just the human DNA, not the bacterial DNA. Right, this is just chromosomal DNA. Just just the human-based DNA. And you stretch it out linearly, how long would it be? To the moon and back or beyond Pluto? You guys have like a minute and 20 seconds. Should I start? Yep, go all ahead. Right. <laughs> That's a fun question. <laughs> I asked this question in my um, biochemistry class. Like on a on a test or just for a... No, during lecture. Time. Like, uh, you know, to see what they think. Yeah, that's one of those... Like, I really like the big numbers, big, really small. Because, like, the human brain, like, we've evolved to comprehend a certain size, a yeah. certain space, a certain temporal window. And when you talk about things outside of that, it just melts brains, right? Totally. Like, I love the analogy when people are talking about the United States economy. They're like, well, if I run a business and I spend, you cannot comprehend <laughs> personal business versus the entire economy of the United States. You just you can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't scale when you're. Yeah, well, and, and orders of magnitude are just hard to comprehend. Yeah. Um. All right, closing oh, screen. Spend your internet points. All right, if you took all the DNA in a human, how long would it be? To the moon and back or beyond Pluto? Oh, the, the answer is uh, not only beyond Pluto, but well beyond Pluto. It's shocking. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, I might get my numbers wrong, but it's, um, I don't know, you know, be close. One cell, the DNA in one cell is only like three meters. So the thing that really scales it is the number of cells in the body. There is it is a shocking number of cells in the body, and so if you um, uh, the other cool fact there is if you took a hundred people, and I, if I've done my math correct, if you took a hundred people and stretched them uh, and took all their DNA and stretched it end to end, you would get to the nearest star. Oh, that is a lot. It is a lot. It's like. You, you, don't, you don't want to believe it. It's like, that. that's not right. It mm. can't be right. But you do the math. Yeah. 
tying back to Rosalind Franklin. She yeah, did crack out DNA, so it was Indeed. great. And then put x-rays through yeah, the structure. Well, got a, got a helix type. She didn't actually get the structure. But she showed the helix and the spacing of the rotations. Right, right. right. Yeah. Oh, Bronco, I'm sorry we didn't clarify. So is this a double helix or single strand <laughs> stitched together? It turns out it double doesn't helix. matter. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, Scuzzbot just put the numbers in there. So the moon distance is 238 kilomiles versus Pluto is 2.6 to 4.6 billion miles. So that is the scale difference between these. That is crazy. crazy. All right, catching up on a few things. Open set, protein structure and microscopy sounds like something my friends are into. Um, proteins we're all into. We, we love that they exist because mm -hmm. we exist because of them. Yes. <laughs> so I fundamentally agree. <laughs> um, DB PhD wants to know, has mRNA made a comeback in gene editing as opposed to CRISPR? Oh, oh, I guess I see what you, the question is. Because, you know, the the RNA in CRISPR is the thing that is that targets um, the the DNA. Well, oh, there's so many CRISPRs. There's RNA CRISPRs and DNA CRISPRs. There's a lot of CRISPRs. Um, for Gina, no. <laughs> CRISPRs in it. It's where it's at. Um, uh there's probably a lot more to that answer, um, but I, I, you know, I am definitely not up on my gene editing technology. <laughs> Hamsterlicious. Being converted into a linear strand of DNA and stretched to the nearest star is now on my list of future goals. <laughs> I mean, put it in your will. They have yeah, to do it, right? maybe at end of life. <laughs> <laughs> they have to do it. <laughs> Speaking of which, like one of my favorite jokes related to that question is. If you took all the, you know, DNA out of the body and you stretched it out, the human would die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my, my follow-up question on that is how long would you live? Because you could remove all DNA from the body. Oh, yeah. And live for a certain period of time. Yeah, so... What's the replacement rate and how... It's <laughs> a good question. Um, I, I don't expect you to know the answer to this, but I, I'm well, curious the, about Well, the that. thing that... <sighs> I, mean, I think it's probably something one could estimate. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that is shocking to me, and this is not the, your question, but um, you know these these poisons like cyanide—they're so fast, so fast. Yeah, yeah. And cyanide, all it does is it um, it impedes the oxidative part of metabolism, mm -hmm. right? So it um, means that, that you're, you're not making ATP at the fastest rate, right? So if you have cyanide, then you, know you can't make ATP at the fastest rate. And you die within like minutes or something like that. It's crazy fast. So that would make me think that if you remove DNA, all the DNA from a person, you're going to die pretty fast. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, so like methylating DNA, methyl mercury, I guess that's a slow process just because of the concentration. But if you methylate, it stops the replication, right? Is that, I don't remember what the mechanism is on that. Is that right? Is it, it stops replication? I think so. That's me. Because methylating DNA is as a form of regulation, right? Yeah. That's, how, that's one of the ways that DNA um, expression, gene expression is regulated by methylation. But if you methylate. Well, that's the way, wait, it's not methylating the DNA, it's methylating the the histones yeah so um is it is it that it stops replication or just makes it more error prone that's what i, I guess don't know be. that's that's a really good question uh ninja physics redeemed a request a factoid okay let's drop some knowledge bombs all right let's see what's what's a good one okay we have a cheat sheet yeah <laughs> uh so here's here's a cool one um the so ocean water is positively teeming with viruses so um when i was a postdoc at scripps uh my um my advisor was like oh we need we need to do some sort of outreach thing i've heard about this experiment so what you do is you take a milliliter of seawater 
and put an EM grid in the bottom of, the, of a tube and centrifuge it. And then you look at it under the microscope. And so I was like, okay, whatever, I'll do it. And, and I did it, I put it in the microscope and it was a zoo of viruses just <laughs> like loaded with um, uh, all sorts of different viruses of different shapes and sizes and uh, you know they were everywhere viruses everywhere and so these are these are bacteriophages right so bacterial viruses um, and um, seawater is just loaded loaded with it it's one milliliter and you know there's you know thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of, of viral particles in it so there you go seawater is loaded with viruses <laughs> i like it there's some streams on twitch that take just like water samples and look at them like, uh -huh. look at diatoms and sure yeah it's just just fun to look at this stuff like it's not answering a scientific question necessarily just seeing it I mean, the load of those viruses is so low, you'll never get affected. So I don't think. Well, and it's easy. bacterial viruses, so it's um, you know, you don't have to have anything to worry about anyway. Yeah. Um, and you know, those are uh, viruses that have um, evolved to infect bacteria that live in the sea. Right. So not ones that we would worry about anyway. Makes sense. All right, Tribal Luminescence wants to know, do mRNA vaccines go into all cells and make proteins or just certain cells? Uh, I think they go with the, um, with, the, with the coronavirus vaccines. I think they, they're expressed pretty ubiquitous, ubiquitously throughout the body. Uh, I've read that, I think, but, you know, it would need some more verification, but I'm pretty sure everywhere. Steve, what do you think? That's travel luminescence, right? Yeah. So what do you think? Is it everywhere? It's there on a minor delay. So we'll wait on that one. Okay. And this is a beautiful game. It really is. Nintendo does such a good job. Yeah. That and uh, Zelda as well. Like the, I watched my, my son play it and I'm just like blown away at the amount of detail and so, thought so, they put into it. So Steve doesn't know. It's just awesome that this has come this far in our lifetime. Yeah. This yeah. will be our, like our great grandparents saw, you know, the first flight and then landing on the moon. This is going to be our... <laughs> right. <laughs> we're we're going to not only see like going from Atari to this, but we'll see AI yeah. on unprecedented weapons. Right. Not just in gaming. Gaming's pushing it, but everywhere. So I, yeah, we, we, we are the last generation of not having internet when we grow. Yeah. It's going to be amazing to see what happens. All right, Bronco wants to know, what what's a structure in your field that's surprising that hasn't been fleshed out as well as expected? Um, I'm assuming that's, see, you're, you're asking what what's a structure that should be solved but hasn't yet? We'll, we'll brand it that way. Okay. Uh, boy, it's it's a really tough question because you know you would if if you're working on it, then there 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 you go. Like that's the reason you're working on it um, because it hasn't been determined well enough yet. So um, trying to think if there's something surprising. Um, well, is there something obvious that? Like, what's, what's the, the, the holy grail of cryo-EM solutions? What's the next... What's the next science paper in it? <sighs> They're hard questions. <laughs> I've got a related question that I could... Up on. I'm saving that one. Um, Alright, I'm going to cheat and answer it in terms of the stuff that I research. <laughs> um... So, um, one of the things that we study is a, a structure called the clathrin coat. This is the thing that membra that deforms membranes. Um, and um, actually, 
pause it. I'm taken back because it made me think of a better answer. Okay, so, so the related answer is, um, okay, so like I said, I, st I study these these proteins that um, that remodel membranes, like you know, lipid bilayers, things like that. Now these are interacting with the with the membrane, right? So, and they have very specific interactions with the membrane. But when you determine the structures, the membrane sort of disappears. So the, the, so the reason things disappear when you do cryo-EM, well, and particularly what we call single particle reconstruction, is so we depend on every image containing a copy of the specimen of interest in different orientations. But it has to be an exact copy. Every atom is in exactly the same place. So when things disappear, that means the atoms from one copy to the next are in different places. So why don't we see the membrane very well? And um, it really um, proposes some, or suggests some really interesting questions like, well, is the protein more than just remodeling the membrane, like making it a different shape? Is it actually splitting it apart? Is it like, do we have local um, patterns of, of, of local organizations of, of lipids um, interacting with the protein? And then, but, but when you average it all together, it all gets averaged out. Um, I think that's going to, I think that's, there, there's some really interesting things there that um, we might be, you know, ultimately able to answer with cryoEM if we can address that heterogeneity. So that's probably not the answer you were looking for, but it's what I, the best I got. DBPHD comments lipid graphs exclamation point lipid graphs okay yeah <laughs> lipid graphs so for those of you who haven't heard of lipid graphs those are that's self organizing areas of membrane so it self partitions um, if you have a mixture of different types of lipids some certain ones of them will under the right conditions they will make these little rafts well they'll find their buddies and just cluster all together. Um, and that can be important in actually the function of a cell. So that's like a soap bubble with like high density regions or higher power. Something like that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, huh. And so that can be actually a, a signal in the cell, right? So it can be used to organize a response, right? So if you have, if you can make a little lipid raft, and that raft is only recognized by certain proteins, well, then you can precipitate a particular reaction. Mm. So does the body use lipid rafts? So that's that's its signaling. It's sort it's of a it's, well, it, it's somewhat controversial. Um, so it, I think it's fairly well accepted that micro domains, like really small patches, exist. Mm -hmm. But you know, when they were originally proposed, it was maybe it was proposed like you know, sort of bigger areas of of membrane. Um, and persisting for a longer amount of time than is realistic. So as time has gone on, the, the lipid raft hypothesis is sort of narrowed a, a bit, I guess. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. So we're almost at a one hour mark. For those of you just joining us, uh, this is Professor Scott Stagg. He's an expert at cryo-electron microscopy, but also all things biology, structural biology, structure of things, structure and function relationships. So if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in chat. Um, the question for you, Scott, is do you want to keep playing this or do you want to switch to something else? May as well switch. All right. We're going to switch up games. So we're going to switch systems. Um, in the meantime, we have a question from Tribal Luminescence. What's your favorite structure? My favorite structure. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to go with ribosome. Uh, <laughs> I mentioned it before, but it is... Well, I got my PhD in, uh, on ribosome structures, but that's that's not the only reason. Oh, it's also pause. which game do you want? Joust, Gauntlet, Gauntlet Two. Uh, let's save Gauntlet. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go with Joust. Yeah, let's go with Joust. All right. All right, back to low graphics. Anyone that got scared away by Mario Kart, <laughs> we, we're now back to low quality eight bit Nintendo graphics. Um, Joust, 1982 game. This game is as old as I am. Mm -hmm. All right, sorry, structural what, ribosomes. What oh yeah, ribosomes. So, you know, I always say that I, that we study, you know, little machines in the cell and try to figure out how they work. Um, 
but the ribosome is truly a machine. Like, you know, it has all these moving parts. Um, it, um, it is ancient, you know, um, it's fundamental for life. It sort of was, was one of the things that proved the, or prove is a tough word, but strongly demonstrated the RNA world hypothesis, right? Because the, the bits, um, of the ribosome that are important for cat catalysis is the RNA, which is really cool. So yeah, ribosome. All right, equally important, what the hell is this game you're playing? It is, um, you're riding ostriches, and you're um, uh, jousting against these um, other guys riding ostriches. And there's a there's a dragon. <laughs> Just <laughs> describe what you see. <laughs> well, that's all there is. And um, yeah, you joust the guys, then fight the dragons. And it was the arcade game that I wanted to play the most as a youngster, going to um, Showbiz Pizza. Yeah, this is this is one of the like not original arcade, but like second generation. This filled everything, like, like this and Brick Breaker, and this was part of Pac-Man generation. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, and um, the arcade version had a lot. It had some nice graphics, sort of like Pac-Man quality graphics. Um, um, it's like it's really satisfying to play in a lot of ways. Also challenging. So we are playing without Game Genie right now. You get five lives, or without cheat codes. I used to this, this game with cheat codes is, is, is would, would be um, too much. So, fun factoid about this game. I looked up the speed run of this. So, it turns out this is an endless game. Okay. It does not ever end. But at level, like, 40, it starts repeating over and over again. So, it doesn't get any harder. So, speed runs, you have to get to level 40. Oh, check it out. I forgot about the hand uh, that pulls you down. You got to stay away from the, 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 the lava or else you get... Oh, you got it. You got it. <laughs> That's a nice touch, the lava hand. Yeah, you know, yeah. Got about the lava hand. Floating ostriches or flying ostriches jousting with lava hands. Why haven't they made this into a movie yet? <laughs> oh, that, was oh. Oh. that was a good one to end. <laughs> do, you, do you want infinite lives? You can keep grinding. No, nah, it's the grind on it. All right. <laughs> well, for Gauntlet, we'll definitely take it. Oh, sh should we do a prediction on this? Will you... So that was level... What level did you make it to? One. <laughs> <laughs> so, what should we do? Will you make... Will Scott make it to... Pause. Level... What do you think? Five? Five seems five, like... Yeah. Five is a hard one. I have no idea, but given my performance on one... I will be a stretch. It seems like you're performing under pressure of the prediction. So let's spend some internet points. Is Scott going to make it to level five on Joust? <laughs> it's a brutal loss. That was your warm up round, though. Oh, you, yeah. You haven't played this in a long time. <laughs> All right. Will Scott make it to level five? Yes or no? Spend your imaginary internet points. Anyone just joining us uh, with me today is Dr. Scott Stagg. He's an expert in cryo-electron microscopy and protein structures. He also likes playing Joust, and we're going to have a bet on whether he's going to make it to level five in Joust. Wave five. Yes. Wave five. Thank Sorry, you for the clarification. Not level five. Wave five. I, I apologize. <laughs> wave five of the ostriches. If that says a five right there, then he has beaten it. So throw your bets in there. Believers or non-believers? Do you want to know again or not? Uh, no, I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> the rage, the rage emote needs to be used more. <laughs> <laughs> so Aaron Venucci, uh, he's a professor from University of South Carolina, came down and visited at one point, yeah. and he rage quit. Uh, it was Mad No <laughs> And so now he has an icon here, <laughs> Venucci rage. <laughs> there it is. It's just those moments when you get raged on. Yes, anyone watching and not following, click the follow button, get your 300 standard internet units, and obviously accumulate them. And you can do things like buying a factoid or requesting that we drink alcohol, which we're going to do anyway, so it's kind of meaningless, but still Speaking fun. Which, Another one? Yeah, let's look level up. Nice.
All right. You have about 20 seconds to place your bets on whether Scott is going to make it to wave five in joust. I apologize for the typo. Tribal Luminescence Redeemed. Take a drink. This is appropriate because you're busting out the, the new one. All right, cheers. So what's what's your drink? This is now um, <coughs> La Fin du Mont. Show the camera. Oh, sorry. La Fin du Mont. Um, it is a Belgian triple style ale, um, and it's 9% alcohol. 9%. But, uh, so, yeah, it's it's a, snip, a sipping beer, but oh, so delicious. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, yes, we have right. two redemptions, so Ninja Physics and Tribal Luna Essence. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully you're drinking at home. Sure, mm -hmm. it's a Wednesday it's night, but we're going to enjoy our Wednesday night by drinking and playing video games. All right. Will Scott make it to wave five? We are going to find the answer right now. But I'm going to ask you questions while you're doing it. The fin de mont in Belgian. Well, it's French, right? But I don't know. <laughs> are we ready? Am I going? Yep. It's all, all right. you. And you don't want to know what people bet. Correct. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. I think dragons hatch from those eggs, right? Or do other dudes hatch? I honestly don't remember. Oh, what no. does fin de mon mean in Belgian is a question. Ooh. The end. The <laughs> end. Something. De end of the mon. world, according Wait, to Café du Monde. What is Café du Monde? It's uh yeah I know that's in that's in a, 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 a guy uh, doing guy things suggests it's end of the world. Okay. Percent alcohol. Uh, <laughs> DB PhD wants to know when was the last time you raged in lab? Raged when in lab. When did you need the vanilla? Not a rager. Rage not not a all? rager. Um. Uh, like I've raged at a computer. Um, many <laughs> that times. That counts as lab. All right. So. <laughs> I'm failing. I think those guys are better too. Like these these guys that hatch from the egg. Yeah. Oof. Tough. Nope. Nope. So anyone that hasn't played the game, the, the controls on this are not easy. Like there's there's a flow and a sway to them that is non-trivial. I wonder if I can get them behind. Ha. Nice. Google Translate also agrees, end of the world. All right. All right, so you've raged at a computer. Yeah, I raged at a computer. I've raged at a microscope. Okay, yeah, that, I've definitely raged at, a, at an electron <laughs> microscope. That is, um, but but not like at students or anything like yeah, that. Like that, no, in, that, that I, I don't do. In, in Scott's defense, the microscope deserved it, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What about it made you rage? What was uh, <laughs> it? It breaks all the time. Electron microscopes, they, uh, they're the most frustrating instruments. They break, they're so complicated. Yeah. yeah. Um, they just break all the time. Oh, no. Oof. I didn't make it to wave five. What, 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 what did you make it to? That was two, what, I think. Did you make it to wave five? The outcome is no. Uh, I'll bet lots of people won. Um, six, what? Six, um, I'm sorry to let you down, yeses. So six people voted no, three people voted yes. But the people that voted yes bet a lot more. They had a lot of faith mm. in you. I have let you down. Uh, game Genie Codes. I want to see if I can get better. Let's, right. let's do it. All right. <laughs> There's the rage. Let's get some rage in chat. Yeah, I have to have rage. rage. At, uh... So that's mildly related to one of the standard questions I ask. Is okay. What's the what's the worst accident you've seen in lab? Okay, so I have two answers. Um, so one of them is uh, so I had an undergraduate in the lab, and um, I did so I didn't see it. This is more like you know I'm aware of it, um, and he uh, he was at night. He was he was there at night. And he was centrifuging um, a sample, and it became unbalanced. Right, the tube broke, and he's like panicking because it's like all shaking and shuddering and whatever. And what what did he do? He sat on it. He sat on the centrifuge. <laughs> Nothing bad happened to him, but uh, he, you know, he like called everybody in the lab, but not me. Because he was like t scared, I was gonna be mad. Um, 
and um, so the uh, it didn't. So nothing, nothing bad happened except the you know it bent the spindle of the microscope, which is it's happened more than once. I would say. <laughs> oh oh um, man. Yeah. So then the second answer. So, um, so that's the most expensive mistake, or that's the well, they're related. Uh, um, uh, oh no, don't get me. Um, so yeah, um, that's uh, well, it's just an interesting, it, it is an amusing act. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's amazing. So, what's the most expensive mistake? Um, okay, so it's. It had the potential to be most uh, expensive, and it's also a good story, so I'm going to take it. <laughs> um, so, you know, a lot of what I do, ugh, come on, uh, is automation, right? So electron microscopy is so hard. Um, we need a lot of data uh, for our technique, so we automate it, right? Um, and back when I was a postdoc, uh, one of the things that we automated was um well one of the things you had to do manually i should say is um fill a nitrogen door every um six hours something like that which is overnight right so you had to come in or stay at the lab overnight if you're doing an overnight run so um, the lab got this automatic liquid nitrogen dispensing device um which is actually, um, they, they're pretty common in uh, the food industry. Um, so they got it from there and they were um, doing an overnight run and um, the sensor broke. And so it overfill, ah, oh, I got it to five. Um, and so it overfilled the doer, and then so liquid nitrogen started coming out. Uh, I'm terrible at this game. Um, and uh, spilled onto the microscope, and um, uh, spilled onto the viewing port, the, the glass, uh, where you view your sample, mm -hmm. and cracked it, and it exploded into the microscope, oh. and um, onto the viewing the chamber, and like glass everywhere. And uh, this could have been, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage. But we had a really great service man, service guy <laughs> who liked us a lot and was um, like really liked what we were doing with automation and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, I think I've got an extra one of those. Let me just go see. And he cleaned it all up, put it in. We lost like three days. Um, and uh it turned out fine <laughs> but it had oh. the potential to be terrible oh my god yeah so your 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 instrument it's not operating under vacuum it is operating it is. under vacuum yeah so that oh, wow. it could have killed the gun it, like that's wow. the um but the the these instruments in particular the um thermo fisher um <laughs> instruments well there's the fei at the time they have so many safeties in place that as soon as it sensed the drop in vacuum um it shut off the gun. Like, it snapped it closed, protected it. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that man needs a raids. Uh, do you remember his name? Shout out to the technician from... That was Thermo? Uh, you know, th former, formerly FEI. I can't remember his name. He was great, though. Yeah. FEI? Yeah, what well, used... So, the, the history of electron microscopes um, goes... It was Philips mm -hmm. from the Netherlands... And then it was bought, Phillips was bought by FEI, who made um, uh, small dual, be dual beam, which is a um, focused ion beam scan electron microscope. We will be talking about that later, as a matter of fact. Um, but anyway, they, they, they're, they, they bought Phillips, um, the TEM part of the company, mm -hmm. and then... Um, uh, then FEI got bought by Thermo Fisher. I see. <laughs> Thermo just buys everything, right? Yeah, yeah. You want an electron microscope? Thermo. You want an oven? Thermo. <laughs> Rotovap? Thermo. How do I kill this? Shout out to Thermo. Sponsor the stream. <laughs> um, and also, viewers, how do you kill that, that dragon thingy? 
<laughs> Does anyone know how to kill the dragon? Can you kill the dragon? Oh. All right. How far did you make it? That was wave two, I think. But I've made it as far as five now. Nice. All right. Tribal Luminescence wants to know what's the world record for resolution, presumably on, on electrical microscopy. Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming he's going to mean single particle cryium. Um, I think it's like 1.3 now, 1.3 angstroms. Incredible. Like, you know, that is truly atomic resolution. You can see every atom. You can see hydrogens, which is really cool. Um, uh, and it was done on a, an easier sample um, called apoferritin. But, you know, it's just going to, things are going to keep getting better. So that that recent paper I sent you the the, the science okay. one yeah no this is so that so they claimed twenty picometers yeah 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 holy shit yeah 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 exactly yeah. so that's um it's a different yeah yeah it's a different technique um I did a little reading on it it's I I think you pronounce the technique oh man uh, what is it t t t I looked it up today tachography um. And so with that technique, you have to have a crystalline sample. Um, oh, like the diffraction phenomenon. It is the diffraction actually, phenomenon. So consistent. And you, you use multiple uh, images, mm, well, multiple shots of the same sample, and you use the interference to get the phase information for the, crystal, for the diffraction pattern. And based on that, you reconstruct the image uh, and um, you, the, you, they were able to get to what? That's like, I think that's 0.25 angstroms resolution. So angstroms is 10 to the 10. Yeah, 10 to 10, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's crazy, though. That's yeah. so. Yeah, it's, it's mind bogglingly resolution. Well, and the resolution's not limited by the instrument, it's limited by they measured at room temperature and the vibration of the air. Right, the right. Cat. Right. So if they right. could do it at like 4K, right, it would be like pico. Yeah, and those instruments do exist. That's helium crazy. cooled. So that's the next step then. Probably. I mean, that's they developed those instruments for cryo EM, the helium um, cooled scopes. That's crazy. Oh, hamsterlicious. Um, <laughs> unrelated to EM, uh, the pterodactyl that flies. Uh, yes. You're supposed to hit it in the mouth and not touch the body. That's hard. <laughs> we learned we can try. <laughs> that was brutal. Uh, FYI, the, um, my gameplay here um, is very similar to my gameplay in the arcade. <laughs> I remember uh, dropping quite a few quarters into this game. Yeah, thankfully no love quarters love. here. And I had a friend in grad school, Chris Meyer. Like, I have a huge Nintendo collection, and I had it with me in grad school. He used to play this game. Okay. I, should, I should have invited him to the stream, because he loved Joust. <laughs> For whatever reason, this is a, a loved game by many. It really is. I I don't know what about it. The, the arcade version was particularly aesthetically pleasing. I think what we need is a 4K release of Joust. <laughs> PlayStation 4, <laughs> Xbox One type. <laughs> oh, this All game. Right. After this round, we should go Game Genie. Because they, okay. get, they get harder, right? The, the higher you go, the faster they move. There's additional things. Yeah. Like, it starts to get really... Sure. <laughs> Maybe have at least more, a few more lives. The original Flappy Birds, yes. You're right. <laughs> Comparable resolution. Oh, they also have a speed run for number of points in this game. First to 50k, first to 100k, so on and so forth. All right, let's do it. All right. Let's, I'm going to enable infinite lives. We're going to march through it. Should be good now. All right. All right. Um, again, anyone just joining us, if you have questions for Professor Scott Stagg, he is an expert at electron microscopy, all things uh, chemical biology, biology structure type things, um, feel free to throw them in chat now and we will do our best to answer them while playing Flappy Birds, quality retro gaming on Ask Scientist Gaming. This is more typical, our, uh, <laughs> our, our quality of game. 
like resolution of game. It's like the original take the high ground. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Star Wars predicted. Joust. <laughs> Actually, no. Inspired. Joust inspired. That was the new Star Wars. Exactly. Oh, come on. So like, oh, come on. so I do a lot of molecules on surfaces. Like yeah. I bind molecules to metal oxides and things like that. Could you see those orientations? I mean, is that... I guess the cryo EM it would just be normal electron microscopy. There's no reason to do cryo. Yes. Yeah, what you would probably want to do is this um, high angular, annular dark field imaging. So that's that's the thing that's typically done to um, image dose insensitive samples like what you would study. Mm -hmm. um, Biomolecules. This is a little fun factoid. Um, so, the amount of energy deposited by an electron microscope on the sample is equivalent to a nuclear bomb uh, going off about, um, I think, ten meters away. <laughs> right. So it, it is a it is a an amazing amount of energy. Um, you're talking about just energy density, like energy per area. Is that? Yeah, yeah, about? yeah. Um, wow. So, um, or maybe radiation is the is the right word. It's it's ionizing radiation energy. It's uh, you know similar, but um, yeah. Uh, so biomolecules uh, just blow up. They they uh, get turned to gas, um, and so uh, you know bonds break. Uh, structure is all, all structure is lost. So we have to do what we call low dose imaging and our images, we take them with an electron dose of, um, about 60 electrons per angstrom squared. And so what that means is every, um, angstrom experiences about 60 electrons. Um, and, uh, but like the 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 amount of number of electrons that one would use for the technique I described is orders of magnitude more. <laughs> so it's pretty fun. All right, time for another prediction. So we're gonna pop up a question oh, right no. now. Total atoms in the human body. The total number of atoms, regardless of identity, this is hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, iron, and so on and so forth. How many total atoms in the human body? Uh, is it 10 to the greater than 10 to the 28th or less than 10 to the 28th? And so scientific notation, uh, basically that's 10 with 28 zeros behind it, or one with 28 zeros behind it, greater than that or less than that. So we're really keyed up on the scales, like yeah. the, the magnitudes, the, the things we don't think about on a daily basis. Greater than 10 to the 28th, less than 10 to the 28th. How many atoms in the human body? We were able to count every single one of them. This is fun. They got rid of the top platform. I guess eventually I'm going to have to get close to that lava hand. <laughs> like that. No worries. Infinite lives worth the risk all right spend your internet points let's bet on this how many atoms in the human body greater than 10 to the 28th less than 10 to the 28th we'll say this is the average human body um, yeah the average human body i think we're at least in order of magnitude correct on this so it could be the largest person or smallest person <laughs> yeah. that ever existed the answer is still correct <laughs> unless there's some other technicality we're missing this is a good <laughs> Scuzzbot says equal to 10 to the 28th. Exactly 10 <laughs> exactly. to the 28th. We don't have a C option. No. <laughs> None of the above. 10 to the 28th and 1. Sorry. <laughs> All people are 10 to the 28th atoms. <laughs> All mass differences are artificial. <laughs> 
Oh, I like it. Alright, 10 seconds left. Spend your internet points now. How many atoms in the human body? Less than 10 to the 28th? Greater than 10? Is this a class question? No, it was one, you know, you, you asked to come up with these, these questions, and I came up with the DNA one, and I was like, huh. I wonder how many atoms there are. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just for fun for you. If you take Scott's biochem class in the future, heads up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'll, that'll be that'll be one of the the questions that keeps me from finishing lectures on time. <laughs> All right. Total atoms in the human body greater than ten to the twenty eighth, less than ten to the twenty eighth. The answer is. It, I can't remember. It's 20, it's 20, it's 10 to the 27. Right? Yeah. Yes, you are correct. It's less than 10 to the 28. So it's 10 to the 27th atoms in the human body. So the other the the addendum to that is if you stretched all those atoms out, you would get to the nearest star. So <laughs> think about that. That just it can't it seems like it can't be possible, right? If you all you do is you take just the atoms in little old you. And you and you stuck them end to end. You get to the nearest star. I, it, you the the mind boggles, right? Yeah. It's hard to. Oh no. The volume of person. And atoms are really small. Stretch linearly. Yeah, it just tells you how small they are and how yep. narrow they are and stretching. That's fun. So yeah, congratulations, anyone that said less than ten to the twenty eighth. And these are just out there. Like your brain doesn't think about this type of scale, no. but. It's amazing that that's the answer. All right, Bronco wants to know, if you had infinite budget and morality didn't matter, <laughs> what experiment would you, you do? All right, so... Um, Fun answer and then real answer? All right, so I forgot what I went out here. Uh, ah, yes. So all my answers were like, what's something chaotic good that, that I could do? Um, so make the world be a better place but also be sort of, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, not the best way of getting there. Uh, anyway, so um, the, the one answer I came up with is um, to create life, novel life. So I think what you can do, um, what we should be able to do is create um, a bacterial-like cell from parts, right? So, um, you know, take, you know, take the ribosomes from E. coli and the RNA polymerase, polymerase from <laughs> You're going to Frankenstein bacteria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's Frankenstein a bacteria that has never existed before. Yeah. And think about the philosophical and religious implications of that, right? You are creating a life. Yeah. That's something from parts, right? So you'd have to, you know... Um, Start with the replica. You know, you'd have to uh, um, provide the DNA and the replication machinery, um, but you could you could put them together in ways that's not um, ex doesn't doesn't exist in nature, and you can get the DNA into a into a, a membrane and provide the you know th that is one thing scientists do is create as have done is create a minimal cell right so start with a uh, already sort of minimal bacteria and then um, just take the parts away. So the knowledge about what it takes to have a minimal minimal cell is is known. Oh, so you got, got it. Oh, nice. Um, and so, but do it for something real. So, yeah. Some really interesting philosophical uh, things there. So that was Steve Leonard's answer as well. Oh, really? Like, create life from scratch. Yeah. Oh, ha, ha. I don't, I don't know if he agreed really with your strategy. Much. I think he said it's cheating, stealing parts from functional things. Okay, but, yeah. I mean, so, so logistically, if I, if I was going to write you a blank check, how do you do that? You bring together the best in the world. You create what facility, what research center, what tools. Like, yeah, so how you're does gonna... one do that? Uh... So you're gonna need some good microbiologists. Like we probably have the evolutionary. Ev yeah, yeah. If evolutionary we got a blank biologists. check, we could do this. Yeah, I think so. De definitely, I think it is very do doable. Hmm. So biologists. Oh. Um, I think you're going fast in this game. It's 
pretty ruthless. Yeah, this this guy is rough. <laughs> tribal, he's, he's got the high ground. Tribal luminescence says we should do that. All right, <laughs> he, he agrees. We just gotta write the grant. Yeah, let's write a research center at FSU, creating life from scratch. And I mean, the implication. Someone to manage the uh, the death threats. <laughs> Creating life from scratch. That's funny that Steve said that too. Yeah. All right, I mean, should I do my other answer? All right, let's say this is the fun answer. Or this well, is I don't the... know if it's fun answer. <laughs> right, what's the other answer? The, the other answer was uh, create a religion um, uh, based on science. So it's chaotic good because you know people would 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 you know make the decisions based on reason, and but it would have some deity like uh, Carl Sagan. Yeah. Who, who uh, you know, people would worship it. Maybe, you know, maybe they wouldn't necessarily have, you know, understand the reasons for uh, um, uh, why a decision or whatever would be made, but they would trust the the great leader. Um, <laughs> Carl Sagan. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so it would require a lot of propaganda and, um, uh, you know, Paying paying um, politicians off, and um, but it would be it would be a force for good, right? Because yeah. there would be a lot less, you know, theoretically uh, irrational, uh, or you could not less irrational. You, you, there would be more managing irrational. I got him. Oh, got him again. Um, nice. Oh, Ugh. irrational behavior, a lot irrational decision making. Yeah. By influencing people's um you know need to um have something to believe in well, two things i would love to sit through carl sagan based sermons <laughs> like, i don't know if, if indeed you guys, right have you guys ever if you've ever heard the the pale blue dot commencement oh, speech so by good. carl sagan like it's hanging above my toilet it's written out like i got it as a gift when i graduated from uh from a colleague and it's i i read through it regularly it basically says you know how arrogant are we when we're just this tiny blue dot and this is what we exist on and we need what a to great experiment too existence like right? the the you know the the like he convinced nasa uh, as the what was the probe that, uh, that took the picture uh what was is that was voyager voyager yeah i think it might have been like voyager. it was just getting out of reach of um the earth you know being able to take a picture of earth and he convinced them to take a picture you know turn it around turn the camera around and take a picture yeah. of the earth and it was just this little blue dot and it was like that is a priceless, priceless. photograph truly right? that truly. is just yeah <laughs> so anyone that visits my house you can go to my bathroom and see the pale blue dot photo and then carl sagan's commencement speech that if, if you haven't seen it I, I should look it up now and put it in chat but it's just it's such a humbling monologue truly like it is the the closest i will ever come to a religious experience in my life is dialogues like that <laughs> really contextualize you within the bigger picture so I, I appreciate that concept but what does a Carl Sagan religion extremist look like? <laughs> like what 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 does the what is the byproduct of somebody that takes it too far? Oh okay, yeah, there's definitely gonna be something. Um, like you're gonna have like bombers well, yeah. clinics that don't do the right control experiment or some <laughs> kind of crazy. Well no, no, it would be it would be more um uh you know, like any religion, just um fights about um interpreting, interpreting the word of Carl Sagan. Exactly. And <laughs> and um uh yeah, take you know mischaracterizing some 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 statement, right? Mm -hmm. Disagreeing about how the you know what is meant by something or another. So I'm so sure that, it would go wrong. That, I mean, that's there could my be favorite some part. Like, there's an inherent monkey paw scenario, right? So yeah. for those of you not familiar, monkey paw is this, this paw that gives you three wishes, but it's like, I want to bring my loved one back to life, but they come back as a zombie. So, like, you have to be very strict in how you define your parameter space, otherwise it can be misinterpreted. And so Carl Sagan didn't have that in mind. <laughs> so, yeah, he wasn't planning on creating a religion. How, how is the extremist going to monkey paw the Carl Sagan religion? Because it will happen. It, right. It will happen. We'll have Facebook groups full of Karens interpreting Carl Sagan the wrong way. 
<laughs> yeah, South Park in the name of science. <laughs> yeah. All right, I found a YouTube video of the 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 monologue, the the pale blue dot monologue. Oh, Don't watch it now because we're watching Joust gameplay. But there's the link if anyone's interested watching Carl Sagan talk about the pale blue dot and just contextualizing our insignificance in this universe, but also our significance in that we are all we have and we need to acknowledge that and treat each other better. So, really awesome, humbling um, way of thinking about the world, and that's why I love I love Sagan far more like Feynman did awesome things like yeah he had a lot of awesome things to say but it wasn't ever as inspirational as Shea yeah was. I mean he was witty yeah yeah he was very sharp very smart yeah. very like he had a vision of the world like Steve and a way of saying it that yeah. um was you know very uh clear-minded and easy to understand but yep wasn't as inspiring as Sagan yeah yeah well, it was inspiring in a different way. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like Steve talked about this a bunch because he basically predicted the field of nanoscience, right? He, he gave one particular talk that's just like, here's where it needs to go. That yeah. There's plenty of room at the bottom. Is the right, right. Well, that's that's the, the one where he says the quote the, about the microscopes, like biology, right? You can, yep. you can understand all of biology if you just build a better microscope. <laughs> Essentially, care, you know, paraphrase. <laughs> that's... <laughs> It's an awesome quote, but it wasn't like this this holistic like humanity aspect of it that right, like right. really captured. So yeah, I agree. Um, Stoic Prime, thank you for the follow. Thank you for joining us as Ask a Scientist Gaming. Anyone that's just joining us uh, with me today is Professor Scott Stagg talking about electron microscopy, in particular cryo-electron microscopy to solve protein structures and understand structural property relationships. He's also playing Joust. Um, Badly. But with infinite lives, so we are doing well. <laughs> Make better of... This, this is a direct quote from... Um, Richard Feynman, make better electron microscopes. <laughs> it's um, it's true. It's true, yeah. And it, it actually really inspired um, people like Richard Henderson, I think, um, if I'm remembering correctly, um, who was one of the Nobel laureates for cryo-EM. All right, uh, I got to catch up on a question here. <laughs> Any chance to freeze and thaw a person without killing them? Uh, good question. I, I mean, it's, feel it's like, like it's a, a no, right? There's I a mean, thermodynamic limit to like gradients of cooling, right? Like that's yeah, and you know, um, crystalline ice does so much bad to tissues. Oh, I mean, it just rips stuff apart, um, and you're you, you it's it's impossible it's almost impossible to avoid crystalline ice like even if you do it if you make vitreous ice like we do with cryo em when you warm it up it goes to crystalline right so the only way you could prevent it from going to crystalline is under high high pressure and yeah doesn't doesn't seem likely to me it doesn't seem possible I think it's more likely that you know computers will advance enough that you can I mean, digitize so, a person. So going back to your, like, there's there's probably an awesome, like, chemical engineering thermodynamics test question you could ask about this, because you need to do thin films with cryo-EM, because yes. you need to freeze all of it simultaneously. Yes. But there's, like, a gradient you can do, like, through tissue, there's a cooling gradient where some regions are warmer than others, some yes. are cooler, and you can't, like, there's no way to freeze all of it simultaneously, right? This right, no. physically impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are frogs that can do it. Alexander, uh, <laughs> thank you. That's true, right? There are yeah, frogs yeah, they, that, that they make breathe this, and they um, revive. They make this. What they? uh, they're like resurrection. It's something. I don't remember their name. I know what you're talking about. Though. Yeah, they, they make this antifreeze compound. Yeah, um, they encapsulate. Yeah, yeah uh, that's true. Um, <laughs> so as long as you have the right biological tools, <laughs> right? Uh, and you know they're also evolved to do that right yeah, that's true. it's not like they uh just like one day were like yeah let's start freezing you know <laughs> probably worked on that evolution wise for uh, a few a few hundred thousand years yeah w walt disney did not have that portion of his dna <laughs> right he's not coming back i'm sorry people <laughs> 
But genetic so engineering. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's only a matter of time before there's a glowing person that can be frozen. So <laughs> I'm looking forward. To I that think that it will be more likely. Did you read? Um, are, you, are you a Neil Stevenson fan? Yep. Did you read his the the book? Um, his latest one. Um, no. I can't remember the name of it, but the idea is um, that uh, you can scan a person's brain and um, digitize their uh, their conscience, conscious. Yeah. Um, and I think that's way more likely than. Um, than you know, freezing and thawing a person. I think the 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 computers are going to advance way faster than we're going to be able to figure out how to freeze and thaw a person without completely destroying the cellular structure. Well, I'm going to devil's advocate on that, and I don't think you need to recreate the entire structure. You just need to have enough information about their day to day existence that you can reproduce it. Right, so if you know every writing by a person, every comment they've ever made, every Facebook oh, post, every you could simulate their existence regardless of the underlying structure. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's the, the, yeah, there's a book on that. I don't remember what it's called, but like at some point, if the a like Google completes our emails, right? It completes our sentences, right. completes our searches. If they have enough information, they could complete essentially your existence for a certain period of time. So if you died, someone might not necessarily know because it could complete that information. Right. And so, I don't know. It's terrible. It's into free will, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. All right. Let's. Uh... Yeah, we should not go into free will. <laughs> yeah, let's not. <laughs> we're not drunk enough. For yeah, that exactly. Yet. Sounds like a Black Mirror episode. Absolutely. That's. In it, it. So my favorite question. So Scott, you've done the in-person Ask a Scientist a few times, right? Yeah. And it's, I, I love the in-person. I love the chat version as well because the questions are out there. But in person, it was it was a very different demographic because you got everyone. Totally. And my favorite question ever was, "Is sex with a clone cheating?" <laughs> and so the idea was, you know, I I have a wife. If if I was able to clone myself and she was with that clone, would that be cheating? And so this led, like, it's such a stupid question, yes. but it led to this lengthy discussion about what do you mean by clone? Do you mean cloning from birth, or do you mean 3D printing every single atom in the exact same place? Because <laughs> if you 3D print every atom, it's me, right? They're, they're well, the complete and quantum state, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... It's, it's me-ish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... Is that me? I I think it is. I think if you could reproduce a person atom for atom, I don't think there's anything beyond atomic structure. So right. me, then it's not cheating, right? And I get it replaced every atom in my body, what, every seven years or something? So am I me from seven years ago? I don't know. It's <laughs> me-ish. Yeah, I mean, it's it's sort of like, um, you know, it's a, let's take it a different way. If you ascribe to the multiverse hypothesis. Oh, man. Um, so if you from a different universe um had sexual relations with your wife is that cheating <laughs> so this person that asked this question was doing it all tongue-in-cheek but you had like a, a psychologist and a physicist and a chemist and a biologist yeah. like brainstorming a solution to yeah, it yeah. affects with the clone cheating and the answer is it depends on how you clone and what you think sure. you is right yes, what defines yes. someone's existence yeah it's it a, a very, philosophical question more than a science question it was just a foundational epistemological mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, holy yeah, yeah. shit mind melting yeah. discussion so that's people laugh when I say that's my favorite but that's why like that yeah the, yeah like, yeah like where's Carl Sagan's good, Thurman on that it's a good question <laughs> All right, a more lighthearted, less black mirror. <laughs> it depends yeah. on the definition of is. is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Re Reese's Pieces wants to know what was the moment you knew EM was the thing you wanted to do. So I'll go more. I'll I'll go further than that and ask this as the broad question. So six-year-old Scott's dad did not think he'd be sitting here playing Joust, talking science. What led you on the path you did, and what was the moment you realized your focus was going to be EM? Okay, so I'm gonna answer both questions because uh, I like them both. Yeah. Um, so um, first, uh, wait yeah. before you go into this answer, 
<laughs> CX Xander wants to know if you have sex with your clone, is it considered masturbation? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. 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 Can we clip that? Dave Plus. Welcome to Ask a Scientist Gaming, where important <laughs> topics like if you had sex with your clone, is it considered masturbation? Uh, comes up. And Scott Dag's answer is uh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the definitive answer from an expert. <laughs> it's absolutely. Um, All right. Sorry. You're <laughs> asked to where you are. Okay. Today. So, first, um, EM. <laughs> so, um, there, you know, a lot of what we do. Is moving clear liquids around, right? You you and you, you take it on faith. Like you know, there's some DNA in there, there's some protein in there. It's um, it's just, it's just clear liquid though. But with electron microscopy, you can actually see it. You can actually see that specimen of interest. And there's something so um, incredibly gratifying about that. As soon as I um, you know took my first image i was like oh I, I am hooked this is this is the coolest thing but longer uh so my path um you know i've always had sort of these philosophical questions right so from a kid like and and you know if you're asking questions you're then you're doing science right so then uh, i went to this liberal arts school called uh, for undergraduate called Oglethorpe um, and I thought I was gonna be a doctor you know but then you know it's it's a they it's a liberal arts school so you're you're doing philosophy you're doing history you're doing all the things and it started started me down this path it's like well is that you know medicine seemed more like an, an equation like you get some 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 number of symptoms and you plug it into the equation and there you go that's that's the answer and that didn't seem that's not discovery discovering it is exciting right so your so. foresight on that is pretty amazing because like software now is better at diagnosing things than doctors are right because right? they are right. like ask a series of questions and can tell you the answer right 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 yeah i mean it's it's a you just plug in a number of symptoms and if you have enough knowledge then you have a decent guess mm -hmm. at the at the solution so anyway so I, I i had that thought i was like you know what's exciting is learning new stuff and so um that started me into the um pure more science biology major and then um i had the fortune of um getting a job in my hometown at a company called Research Genetics, and it, it um, it's now called Hudson Al Alpha. And I just Hustle want to Alabama. point out how many guys are on the screen right now. Yeah, there's a lot this of guys. crazy. Anyway, you can see sorry. how many times I died just trying to get <laughs> off the ground. Yeah, just to get up here. <laughs> yeah. Um, Holy crap. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, I was, I was working at this this uh company research genetics and uh um well so i know i got this job at research genetics and um i got in the r d department and um i actually made a product uh and i you know i i um but i realized that you know the ceiling was with my head you know with an undergraduate degree you have to have a phd to do anything and so, um, so yeah, then I went to, to graduate school and thought I was going to do molecular biology. And then, um, my advisor gave one, gave a lecture in my, you know, one of the classes, um, about structural biology. And I was like, oh no, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And then combine that with the, my answer about cryo EM and there you go. That's awesome. I mean, that's most of us, right? Like, yeah, right. No one's like, I'm going to be a firefighter. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a lawyer. Yeah. None of us think we're going to be where we are. No. So it's, no. it's one of my favorite questions in terms of how we land where we are. Yeah. But most of us really love our jobs. Like, we have yeah. crazy hours, and it's super frustrating at times, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, I have sort of a darker interpretation of that. I, I think there's, <laughs> that we're doomed to science because... <laughs> There, there's this itch you've got this itch and the only way you can scratch it the only way is by doing science by doing discovery you got this discovery itch and it's not 
I mean, it is rewarding. I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I sort of joke about all the downsides, but there are a lot. <laughs> it's stressful, yeah. so stressful, and um, you know, long hours that you don't necessarily want to be long hours. There's a lot of bullshit too that you have to deal with, but you you can't not do it. Like that's the thing. You're yeah. you're sort of doomed to it. <laughs> Well, the, the, on the philosophical end of this, so, so the analogy I give is I used to be a high jumper, believe it or not. I was a high jumper I, in college. I do believe it, actually. <laughs> I'm a relatively tall guy, but one of the things about high jump and pole vault is that you always end on a miss. Uh, like, you can do a 100-meter dash and have the best race ever, but if you're a high jumper or pole vaulter, you right. always end on a miss. And so the thing about being a scientist is we will die with unanswered questions. Yes. It's 100% true because we never prove anything. We never get to, you know, say this is the way things are. We can just say, I've made the world slightly less wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I we are going like to die on a miss. <laughs> and it's cynical, but we're going to do our best to try to answer those questions as much as yeah. we or at least get a better answer for the questions <laughs> along right. the way. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I agree. It's cynical, but yeah, again, I love it. Like, yeah, I love yeah. It. I, just, mean... I get to explore crazy things. That is a strong beer. <laughs> End of the world. <laughs> Here it is. So what wave are you on? I didn't even check. 20, 38. 38, yeah. So you need one more wave and you have beat the game. <laughs> Udo beat the game. Let me check what oh, this How many lives I <laughs> have spent. How, yeah, that, that would be a good question. Um, <laughs> How many lives I have? Uh, yeah. I could set up a, a counter for that, but I did not. Yeah. So do you know what the speed run record is to wave 39? Oh, I'm going to guess. Let me guess. So we've, well, I've been playing this, what, I'm guessing like 30 minutes? Mm-hmm. Okay. You probably said that, didn't you? Um, so speed run record. Five minutes. 17 minutes oh. is the fastest you can do this. But that's with only dying like five times, yeah. which is pretty crazy. Yeah, it's hard. This is not an easy game. Texas Space Agency, welcome. Good to see you. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Well, that's a good name. That, that's, <laughs> that's a really good name. I, I, I don't know the full implications of a Texas space agency, but thank you for joining us. If you have questions, our, our expert today is Professor Scott Stagg. Um, he's playing Joust, also talking about cryo-electron microscopy, also religion based on Carl Sagan, dying with unanswered questions. We've, we've had a barrage of things. Being uh, doomed it, to science. Is, is sex with your own clone masturbation? We have answered that question yeah, it's tonight. A, it's a so, yes. <laughs> if anyone has additional questions beyond those, uh, feel free to throw those in chat right now. And I think after you... So the number is to one. I don't know if infinite lives is real. What? Oh. What happened? Oh! <laughs> so I didn't. So we do know probably how many lives. So I had. it is possible. Game Genie can only put in something like ninety-nine lives. <laughs> you ate through right. all of them. Did you get to wave forty? No. All right. Oh, I think that is the universe telling you it's time to quit. I think so too. You ready for some gauntlet? Uh, let's do it. All right. And you gotta ask, ask, ask the question. I do have to ask the question. Yeah. So Gauntlet was a game that Scott played a lot. No, 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 not a lot. I played it one time <laughs> in particular. <laughs> I wanted to play it a lot. All right, let me let me put this in here before you, I guess you can. So Scott sat down at an arcade cabinet once and spent a whole lot of money on a in 1980, what did I say? 80, no, 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 89. 85. 85, 85, yeah, that would be right, so, 1985. So Scott sat in an arcade, his parent gave him, parents gave him a certain amount of money. How much did he spend on one game of Gauntlet? This was the first time you played it, you picked it up. And yes, it was, uh, it was at a movie theater, as a matter of fact. They, they gave money to go to a movie. And how much money did I drop on? <laughs> did he drop $10 or $20? Either way, your parents were upset. Yes. How upset were they? Were they upset $20 worth or $10 worth? How much money did Scott drop on an arcade? This was a quarter arcade, right? Yeah, yeah, and quarter so arcade, yeah. One quarter gives you, um, oh, what are you going to play as? I don't know. The Barbarian, <sighs> the Wizard, the Archer, or... 
The uh, sexist la- uh, lady warrior. Yes. Not so. functional armor, but so it goes. Actually, the guy doesn't have armor in this either. So that's, right. That's... I, th- I think I'm going to go with the wizard. So the question is, how much did Scott drop in one session? And the thing is, you guys could not possibly know your answer, so feel free to throw your random internet points on this guess. <laughs> did he spend $20 or $10 on a session? Uh, $10 being 40 or 40 quarters, $20 being 80 quarters. <laughs> in one minute, 80. That's a lot of quarters. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> like, so what is that? That's probably five minutes per play. <laughs> That's a whole lot of play time on, on that number of quarters. <laughs> Shockingly little. <laughs> uh, that's so, so. 40 quarters is a light session. For this game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing back in the day. Like, they didn't design games to be fun. They designed games to chew quarters. And, like, how can you engage people so they'll still pump money into the system? Early video gaming was a different monster, that's for sure. So we have no Game Genie codes on right now. One thing I really love about this game is that the the health in the top left corner, if you guys see that, it's ticking down with time. So both time (laughs) and damage cost you in this game. It's a really fun game. And that's why you spend it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very few people guessed, but how much did you spend in one sitting with your parents' money on it this was, game? It was uh, $20. <laughs> um, and it has this particular mechanic where um, the uh, the characters beg. They, they're like, feed me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't survive without you. That's right. And you can feed them by finding food um, in the game or by feeding them quarters, which is brilliant. Um, but yeah, uh, I got grounded pretty pretty hard for it. <laughs> so what's the story here? You got $20 for something. <laughs> it's for, for, well, for going to the movies, right? So we went to the movies. The movie was done. My parents dropped me off. Um and so me and my buddy went to the movie and we saw the movie and then we had time to kill afterwards so we're like yeah let's try this video game it looks fun and then you know, we started playing and it was indeed super fun because you could each play a different player and it's really oh yeah note the arcade was, you could have all four characters at yeah. once sit standing next to each other cooperative all standing next play. to each other it was, it was great great yeah. fun and then but the kind of the health bar constantly going down feed me <laughs> and uh we we're having a great time so we just kept plunking yeah. quarters in and yeah sunk cost fallacy again mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I put so much into this i have to keep going oh the jurassic park shooter arcade game yeah yeah, yeah. that that consumed a lot for <laughs> me it was the uh, area 51 game that that was yeah that one ate a lot of quarters back in the day yeah, you have to essentially pay to win for most of these. Yeah, there was yeah, some yeah. you that that's why the countdown in this was brilliant. Yeah, because right? it's like mandatory death. Exactly. Like if you were good at Pac Man, you could beat Pac Man without dying. But this right. one had a counter, like just yeah. And it was an adventure, you know, sort of D and D ish. Each character had their own special so, traits. So if your son dropped twenty dollars on an arcade, yeah, are you upset or are you? Uh, like, mildly proud <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be an upset <laughs> yeah we're, we're trying to inoculate him against that actually so there's games uh, that like he'll say oh wow, i want to play that looks cool on so i've taught him how to recognize spam games oh uh, that yeah. is awesome <laughs> yeah so um so hopefully there will be less of that and like you know how Skins and stuff is a sort of scam, right? You know, it's just more ways of taking your money. Well, so one thing we had to talk to our daughter about is we we we've, we've been cord cutters for like almost it's got to be ten, almost fifteen years now. Oh wow! And so we've only done internet video and things like that. And I use AdBlock and stuff like that. But we uh-huh. go to a hotel and all of a sudden the TV has advertisements. And like our daughter asked us, why did you change the channel? Like, why did you change the show? Because all of a sudden right. this crap pop, pops up and so now it's a discussion about like, you know, do you, they're trying to sell you something, yeah. right? And they're trying to get you to buy this. And so one recently- a really we great went, lesson too, yeah, you know? Is like, there's a Tony the Tiger advertisement about uh, Tony the Tiger, Mighty Mighty Tiger, and it's a very yeah. catchy song. And she's like singing this after uh-huh. singing it. <laughs> and we're like, well, they're trying to sell you things. And she was like, I don't want to buy it. I just like the song. 
like that's how they get you yeah <laughs> that's how they get you <laughs> so yeah they're growing up in a very different world than us oh look at all these ghosts wow so the skulls reproduce the ghosts apparently oh i'm toast oh you are just oh, this eating is, this damage not, right now <laughs> not good nope you gotta bottle neck bad em. strategy bottle neck em. There you go. Yeah, but they're gonna keep coming though. I gotta get those skulls. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> they're just gonna absorb hits. <laughs> so I looked up. There's there's a super there's a Sega version of this and a Nintendo 64 version of this that are like yeah basically the same gameplay but slightly more <laughs> skulls. Just going for the exit. I mean, so the goal is to get the. Those are just point based, right? Those don't help. I don't know. Oh, something happened. Uh, that was your time limit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. I um, I think it was Gauntlet Two that I played. Um, oh, that was the game. Do you want to do Gauntlet? Let's three? try Gauntlet Two. Yes, right. we're that switching was... over to Gauntlet Two. Yeah. Slightly higher graphics. <laughs> Do you want Game Genie? Yeah. Got, I mean, you gotta have your Game Genie for this. So cheat codes here are infinite energy and infinite keys. You should be good to go. Cool. All right, to anyone just joining us, we are playing Gauntlet 2 with uh, Professor Scott Stagg. He is an expert at cryo-electron microscopy, protein structures, solving structures, how those structures relate to functions, particularly vesicles, and how they transport signal molecules across membranes, um, and how the structure dictates those properties. So if you guys have any questions, biology-related, um, structure-related, we are happy to field those and answer questions while playing Gauntlet 2. With slightly better graphics. <laughs> <laughs> Not dramatically no. better. But slightly There's a better. shadow. What was the year difference in this one? This no like two years later. Upgraded the technology significantly. <laughs> uh, oh, I like it. What's this? Oh. All right. So while we're transitioning games, I'm going to ask you a few of my own questions. Uh, this is one of my favorites because I've watched a lot of movies. We've been cord cutters, so we don't watch TV shows yeah. anymore, predominantly movies. What movie or TV show gets your discipline right, and what gets it wrong? Yeah, so there are not a lot of TV shows or movies that do structural biology. <laughs> so I will... Um, Electron microscopy, though. That's yeah, the... well, so uh, the, um, I'll go sort of general biochemistry at first. And okay. they, like... Um, so like forensics, right? That's very related to stuff we do, like PCR and um, stuff like that. And so just the, the amount of time that it takes to to <laughs> to you know answer. figure these you know <laughs> yeah. these molecular answers is preposterously fast. Um, and um, so uh, and then like with with imaging. Um, you know that someone can take a picture of a virus and like know instantly how it works like there's a it's an outbreak i think was a movie like it, it was like an ebola like a virus and they took a picture like an electron micrograph of it and they saw it like this that's the dustin hoffman shape. yeah the Duff, yeah. dustin hoffman yeah and like oh that's a blah 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 so yeah that, <laughs> that didn't, you can't do that <laughs> but uh um so that this is the two part right so what would they get right as well or Yes. So, I I'm cheating and saying it's not my field. And I will say, uh, you know, the movie Interstellar. Mm -hmm. I love their treatment of like the uh, time, gravitation, time dilation thing, mm -hmm. right? How time works different, moves differently mm -hmm. in different gravity environments, different gravity, as is just and how they how they how they dealt with that. In the movie as a plot point oh it's great i loved that movie so as a general science you like interstellar so that was yeah. david collins answer actually as well so he studies astrophysics and formation of stars and yeah things sure. like that yeah i don't doubt it i mean there's not a lot of movies that really do science well yeah um and that one nailed it they also you know i i uh understand that they made like the first simulation of a 
black hole and it was fairly realistic it's, it's really cool yeah turns out you can't do that on an nsf grant budget you need a movie <laughs> budget to actually do those calculations so <laughs> no very cool i mean but even then like so, so a lot of the csi shows use electron microscopy right they show like is it electron microscopy where they, they show like light, reds and like, hairs and like samples of or is it just it, visible microscopy? It might be light. It might be scanning electron microscopy. Scanning electron microscopy. It's really pretty because mm -hmm. you know we get this beautiful, contrasty um, uh, images that look sort of three D. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of TEM. Yeah, but they had like forensics had a huge issue after like CSI started showing this because like yeah, right. if you're a prosecutor and you're trying to convince a jury that thinks CSI is real that like there's enough evidence right like that's imaginary this right. is entirely fantasy evidence that doesn't right. exactly exist in the real world well the yeah that's definitely true the thing I wanted to say also that is interesting is you know like how it's preposterous how quickly they do things like sequencing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's getting really <laughs> it's getting faster. so much faster. Yeah. That, you know, it's it's not so far out of the question anymore to and that's definitely gonna happen in our lifetimes, uh being able to sequence entire genomes. Um the well, first genome was what? 2010, 28, something like that. It wasn't that long I think ago, it was right? 2000, right? It was like the human genome project yeah yeah I think, was, I think it was like 2000 ish 2001 i'm bad at those remembering those numbers yeah first genome solved maybe i'll search that first genome or first human genome <laughs> first genome was way before that first human genome solved that's true you can do like worms and whatnot yeah Bacteria. <laughs> Texas Space Engine Agency. Enhance. Enhance. Yeah. Don't you just, <laughs> yeah. don't you just exactly. enhance your EMs? Yeah. <laughs> 2003. Yeah. No, you're right. 2003 was the first human genome officially solved. Yeah. Such a huge deal. <laughs> That's true. CSI makes you think DNA is everywhere. Not only everywhere, but there's enough of that. DNA. It actually is, it everywhere, is everywhere, but you but, can't amplify um, it enough to measure it. Yeah. Sequence it for sure. Yeah. Uh, the PCR stuff, it actually, they can do that stuff, but it's not fast. Yeah. Not at least not as fast as they Please show. Believe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Texas Space Agency. Footloose gets my discipline right. There will be blood gets it wrong. <laughs> I don't even want to know the answer to your discipline. I just want to leave that one hanging. <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. there will there will be blood. Blood so, loose. <laughs> loose. Well, yeah. So I'm just trying to based on those two clues. I'm trying to figure out what it is. I'm assuming that's made up. But if agency, you have an answer, that would be awesome to know. Otherwise, we're gonna. The answer is geography. Holy crap. Okay, geography. Oh, I'm, loose. I'm so Geography, footloose geography. I mean, like footloose gets it right, and <laughs> there will be blood gets it wrong. That's too bad because there will be blood. Blood is a great movie. It's one of my favorites. As is footloose. Yeah, <laughs> a documentary filmed in real time. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, geography. <laughs> enhance, enhance. Oh no. All right, I'm gonna have to run to the restroom. All right, I'm gonna leave you with a question before I go. Okay. Unless anyone in chat has questions, feel free to throw them in there. Scott can actually see them and maybe answer them. Um, what was the most memorable, impactful moment of your scientific career? Ah, uh, okay. Um, so, uh, the when I was in my postdoc, and um, I was. Um, studying the, the 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 protein complex that that was the topic of of, of my research and he'll be we, we've been working on it for a while and I, f I finally got a condition that i thought was pretty favorable and um you know we we got it to what we thought would assemble and uh took the first cryo em image of it and we could see these 
geometries. Like it was this beautiful, like the these like crazy shapes, like a square within a square, and these hexagonal shapes, and it was everywhere on the on the EM grid. And I looked at it and I was like, "That's a nature paper." And then it was a nature paper. It was, um, you know, there's sometimes when, and it's very rare that you do an experiment or, and you, you know, or, or, you know, you're studying something and it's a surprise and you know, instantly that it's huge. And that was, that was it. That was the paper that got me my job. It started, really started my independent career. You were first author on the nature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is stars aligned type event. Like that's yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's awesome. Well, and just first image. Yeah. Saw it and it was like, oh, that's it. That's 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 the one. And you know, then you know, a year later, it ha actually happened. But I could just tell from the one is so novel, explained so many things, um, so significant. Yeah, that was it. So I missed half of that, but I'll watch it on the YouTube video. <laughs> cuddly puppy. We're going to go with cuddly puppy's question first. Cats or dogs? Uh, Do you have either? I have a dog. Um, <laughs> I grew up with cats. Ooh. I, uh, I like them both quite a lot for very different reasons, unsurprisingly. Um, I miss cats. We, my wife is allergic to them. Um, and I just, I like how... How bitchy they are you know they they're independent they, yeah. don't, they can take you or leave you I, I really respect that um about cats um dogs are definitely more fun and or, or more fun with a kid too like it's fun to see the relationship that my my child has with um with our dog so I'm not giving you a hard, a definite answer. I like them both. <laughs> and the fact that you have a dog and you're saying you like them both, you like cats. <laughs> <laughs> I do like cats. I respect cats. I don't know if I like them. I do myself, but you're, you're right. The independence is pretty amazing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you like cats, there's a disproportionately high likelihood you suffer from toxoplasmosis. Oh, right. <laughs> that may be true. We'll take it. What's the deal with these purple things? Oh, I can't. Oh, I think I'm stuck. Oh, no, he, he died. All right. Speaking of pets, we're going to throw up another prediction right now. This is one that came from Scott. It's related to animals. Um, the question is about polar bears. And so the question is, where do polar bears get most of their water content from? And so the answer is it's not drinking seawater. It's either from drinking blood or eating fat. Which one of those two is it? Do they get their water content from drinking blood or eating fat? What drove you to this question without it's, answering? Um... It's in biochemistry. It's a it's sort of a biochemistry thing. Oh, is it? Yeah. So this is a test question. It's like a metabolism thing. All right. What's what's the audience's guesses? Use your standard internet units. Guess the, the answer to polar bears. Where do they get most of their water from? Uh, if any of you aren't following us, click the follow button. Get your three hundred standard internet units and bet big on whether it's from blood or from eating fat. This is an amazing question, by the way. <laughs> like, it's just not something I would have expected or seen before. So I'm, I'm really curious what the answer comes out to be in this quiz. Also, I missed two request of factoids while we were talking. Oh, okay. But, all right, put your predictions in now. Polar bears get most of their water from, is it from drinking blood or eating fat? I can't see the timer, but I see a thing queuing down. I don't understand why I'm, I guess I'm supposed to find the exit. I have no idea. Honestly, I did not play this game much. I gave it a try when you said you wanted to play it just to see it, but I do not know. 
<laughs> you only like cats because of brain parasites. <laughs> That's not 100% true. Exactly. We'll say 50% yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you gotta respect cats that that's a thing, <laughs> like the parasite. But I have, I have a reason for liking cats. It's not, you know, I don't feel, I don't think I'm manipulated into it. <laughs> it's right. a solid reason. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but did that parasite make you think that was the rational justification for your love of cats? All right, so polar bears, they, they get water. Obviously, they have to drink water. We drink it from the faucet, but they don't have that option. So their options are drinking blood or eating fat. Where do polar bears get most of their water from? And it's fat. It's fat. The answer is um, by metabolizing fat. When you, um, it's the same thing as camels, right? That's why they have a big old uh, fat hump. Uh, it's, it is a, um, when, when they metabolize the fat, it, one of the products is water. And so it turns out when they eat still, like one of the reasons their diet is so rich in fatty mammals like seals is cause they have lots of, uh, that's the fat and that's, you know, they can't drink the seawater. Um, the, and, and eating ice, even though it's fresh water is, uh, is deadly because, uh, you know, they they can't maintain the temperature. So they eat lots of fat and metabolize it. And that's where they get their water. I mean, I want to express how crazy that answer is, right? So the blood is like what? 95% water or something crazy like that. Right. It's, it's mostly water content, but like fats are hydrophobic. They hate water. They don't interact right. with water, but through a chemical reaction, they generate water through hydrolysis. Like that is insane. It I is insane. I did it's, not know it's, that. Um, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But it's it, it is the it is the case. They, they don't. I don't think they do much with the blood, or maybe they do drink the blood, but it's it's not nearly as much water as the fat. So do they starve to death first or dehydrate? Probably water think, content. Probably dehydrated. Yeah, that's a good question. Like when you know, I've watched the um, you know the, the depressing documentaries. Um, they say how skinny the bears are when yeah. they're healthy, and so that would suggest not water. But yeah, yeah, that, that's know. very counterintuitive. Congratulations yeah. to anyone that got that right and got it right for the right reasons. That is a. a crazy crazy answer so it is from from the fats it's from eating fats and it generates water during the processing yeah so cuddly puppy says so what you're saying is if i'm dying of thirst i should eat a cheeseburger <laughs> you're not a polar bear <laughs> <laughs> but scott is a doctor so sure <laughs> you prescribes 30 cheeseburgers <laughs> They use the blood for finger painting Coca-Cola ads. I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> Almost felt like that's a trick question. That is kind of hard about our predictions because anyone going into this doesn't know how their predictions will be interpreted. Right, like, right. Because like, you can use meta information like which one's the most extreme. Is it the extreme answer? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty awesome. All right, questions. Uh, so there Texas the Space Agency, congratulations on your gift, gift sub. Scuzzbot, uh, thank you for giving that gift sub. Uh, enjoy your emotes. Uh, the, the ethanol and rage one, use those liberally, both in our chat as, el as well as elsewhere. Um, again, th thank you for the gift sub. Um, do, 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 do. So, so there are factoid requests, right? Yep. So Ninja Physics had a factoid request. I think I missed a few of them, so drop some knowledge bombs. All right. I got to look at my my thing here okay oh that's yours let's see so i've done yours that's mine oh. viruses i've done nanoparticles okay um i will um go with all right so one of them is sort of domain specific and the other one is well they're both domain specific so anyway i'm i'm wasting time so uh we talked a lot about um, electron microscopy and single particle um, reconstruction. That's the, the technique that I use, right? And to do that, you have to purify this, you know, sample that you're interested in, in um, studying. Um, it's a lot of work. 
Um, so wouldn't it be cool if you could do that in cells, right? Let's just, you know, like, like what we were talking about earlier, Feynman said, like, if we could see these things at near atomic resolution mm -hmm. in the cells, wouldn't that be so cool? Cause we could see how these, in, the, these molecules are interacting with each other, how they're working in time, um, in context. So that technology is now within our grasp and it's been, it's been, uh, made possible through, um, this technology called focused ion beam milling combined with scanning electron microscopy. And this is why it, I chose it as a factoid because it's so sort of mind boggling, same, you know, similar as my other stuff. Quite, okay, so, <clears throat> so what they do is you take your, 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 your sample, like your cell and you, you can, you can, turn, you can freeze them like individual cells. You can freeze without tearing them apart. So you freeze them. Then you stick it in this instrument that has an ion beam. So it's this gun that shoots gallium ions. And you can use your scanning electron microscope as a target. Like, you know, so that's your scope. And you can shoot this gun and carve out sections of the cell. So you can carve out the top, you can carve out the bottom. And then um, uh, using other techniques, you can target that so that you can get just your molecule of interest in this little section we call a lamella. Um, and then you can, um, once it's nice and thin, you can put it in the electron micro, the TEM, and determine the structure um, truly native, right? Mm. In, in, in place, in context, um, at high resolution. And that's, that's really exciting stuff. Mm. So... Not so much of a factoid, but it's uh, it's a it's factoid really about current exciting. progress in the technology. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> so it turns out it's really mechanical, just a series of pumps. Series of pumps. Uh, partly, yeah. <laughs> pumps, guns, yeah. That's awesome. All right, going back to what I missed previously, a guy doing guy things that wants to know, what's the most likely breakthrough in your field in the next 50 years, or what would you like to see? Well, 50 dang, years I, is a long time. Yeah. Let's, let's cut that down to 15 or 10 years. By 2035, what do you want to see in cryo EM? Or well, like so I think I, I just... Um, That's the... Yeah, uh, gave the answer there, but it's... Um, um, not just so so in you know the next 10 years let's say not only your uh molecule of interest but all of them like that's possible i think like identifying all the molecules in the cell where they're you know what they're doing who they're interacting with um and um you know how they're changing over time Man, that's that's crazy information. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, again, Feynman. If you can measure it, like you know how it works. Yep. Like that's that's how you solve that problem. <laughs> I mean, the, the 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 next byproduct of that is going to be like personalized medicine, mm -hmm. right? Like if you can well, figure out that information. A guy doing guide things. Thank you for the subscription. Again, we appreciate you guys. We don't necessarily need the support, but we appreciate it. It pays for the beers, especially the 9% alcohol. That's um, end of the world alcohol. So we appreciate the subs. Thank you very much for the support. Um, um, and Texas Space Agency has questions about oxidative stress. What do you know about oxidative stress? I should know more. Um, so, so you know, the last step in metabolism um, is um, so-called the electron transport chain, and so it's a series of, elect of uh, oxidations reductions, right? And if it, if everything goes as planned. You end up with electrons donated uh, oxygen and you make water, right? But a lot of times it doesn't. And so you'll get these side reactions. Um, 
And so those side reactions create oxidative byproducts that are not so good. They're toxic. And um, so that, uh, you know, they, they can oxidize your membranes, mess up your DNA, cause mutations, stuff like that. Um, so that's what I know about oxidative stress. <laughs> So Texas Space Agency, my colleague Kyle and I are working on a unified theory, uh, biology, and the key is oxidative stress. Interesting. Unified theory of biology and oxidative stresses. I don't know what a unified theory of biology would look like. Yeah. I don't either. I mean, if you oxidation don't get the, is certainly important. So if you don't get the linolic acid, linolic you don't get acid. the rascal mutants or mutations. If you don't get the... And then like, you don't get the rascal mutations. Hmm. So linoleic acid is one of the fatty acids that is um, uh, a component of biological membranes. Um, now, it, maybe what Texas Space, Space Agency is saying is that it would be an electron sink um, to prevent side products. That may that that may be the case. I'm not sure, but um, I'm guessing that's what that um, what it was meant there. I think I may be going in circles. <laughs> <laughs> Cuddle Puppy wants to know how many subs for you to switch from beer to Everclear. What is Everclear? Is that like pure Vodka, alcohol? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think when we can go back to Uber rides, like yeah, I want to exactly. get enough subs to pay for people to get Uber rides yeah. coming from my house, and then we will get quite drunk playing yeah. video games and doing Ask a Scientist. So that is in our future at some point. Regardless of the number of subs, that's going to be the goal. So like when COVID completely subsides. We're herd immunity plus our kids are completely vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, what would that be? Fall or spring? What, what's your? I don't, I don't know how to predict that, but what's your get, optimistic in guess? the in the in this fall? Mm. That'd be my guess. Why can't yeah. I take this guy down? Okay. Look at look at how evil this game is. Like so, what, see how it's bouncing, and it hits you. So if we wouldn't have um, the uh, oh, that would damage heat's you. On, yeah, it would damage you. The reflection yeah. acts. Wow. Yeah. Texas Space Agency. But I've been drinking. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. <laughs> I'm just an agricultural applied econ economist. Man, applied... Like, So if we're going to be honest, most of what Scott and I do will never be used for anything. <laughs> like, And that's the brutal reality. We're hoping something will be useful, but like, people that do applied work actually make a difference. Yeah. So, I mean, especially in agriculture. like. Yeah, right? Uh, synthetic meats that's the next big one totally that's, that's what i'm predicting in terms of agriculture and how it impacts that synthetic meats are going to be a game changer but i'm not an expert in that domain by any means you ever watch that um youtube guy uh mark rober you know what i'm talking about no i don't he's great um great to watch with kids too that's um awesome. yeah really great but he did a whole special on um the on synthetic meats uh and like you got to go to the, the the two different you know the the you know the big ones the like the better than whatever beyond meat and uh there's another one so he, he went to both places and they showed him the how they manufacture the stuff uh and how simple it is really um and then he he tried some with like bill gates it's really, it's really fascinating, really cool stuff. Ooh, Texas Space Agency is against synthetic meats. That is interesting. That is interesting. That's a tough dialogue to have in chat, but I'm very curious. Because, I mean, in terms of energy and thermodynamics and water consumption, and yeah. I, I, I'm curious the cons. Because that's, that's something I haven't looked into enough. But, yeah, very curious. Uh, ecology and econ uh, economist on the Great Plains. Yeah, no, it's going to impact a lot of people. Like, there's going to be a lot of job loss if that becomes a viable strategy. Yeah. Probably some job opportunities. It just re will require a, a 
a change, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's, I think it's inevitable, right? It's yeah. It's an outcome that's going to happen. Mark Rober is famous for the glare bombs. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, the yeah, one that, right. the, the package stealers. I have right. seen some of those videos before. I, I haven't seen his other stuff, but the, 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 the glitter bombs plus videotaping it is pretty amazing. That's right. <laughs> uh, that's fun. All right. We are at 1025. It's time to throw up another factoid. Um, this one's for fun. Not quite as much fun as the polar bear question because that one was out there and amazing. But um, so this prediction we're going to ask, if, if a chromosome was the width of spaghetti, how long would it be? 30 miles or 300 miles? And so, Scott, if you can explain what a chromosome is, what you mean by the width of spaghetti. So, um, chromosome is, you know, our basic unit of DNA, right, mm -hmm. for humans. Um, so it takes DNA and it binds it up so it's not just stretched out, right? It, it compacts it. Uh, that's chromatin, mm. right? So chromatin is DNA plus proteins that condenses it. Mm -hmm. uh, chromosome is just the DNA, but, you know, we have... Um, 24 chromosomes times two. Um, so uh, that, you know, in every one of our cells. So if you just took the typical chromosome. Okay. Um, just the DNA. And you, and then some number of nucleotides along. And it's uh, currently, um, it's, uh, well, currently, it's, uh, so like 20 angstroms, 20 angstroms right wide, I think. Mm -hmm. And if you expanded that width to the width of spaghetti, <laughs> how, how long, long would, would the chromosome be? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's super narrow, but if you were made to make it as wide as spaghetti, how long would it be? 30 miles or 300 miles? Yeah. It's another scale question. Red Warrior now has... <laughs> so text Red is published in favor of maintaining ruminant grazing is the most ecological and economical use of the marginal lands that 75% mm. of ag land occupies. We can't grow high quality crops there, but we can graze it. Mm. So it is an alternative. Interesting. Not even soy? Hmm. That is interesting. Oh man, I forgot to set it for two minutes, so it was a 30 second bet. Um, and no guesses on that one because uh, I made it too short. So, what's the answer? Isn't it 30? It is yeah, 30, 30 miles. Yeah. 30 miles versus yeah, 300 impression. miles. Order of magnitude, it is 30 miles. That so, is the, the fun part is imagining um, the cell, right? So, imagine keeping up with 48 30 mile long strands of spaghetti <laughs> without <There's> function <laughs> yeah 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 right with without it tangling yeah, yeah. or breaking replicating at 99% Replica efficiency like and and ex and finding the bits on, of it that you need to express at any one one instant and that's shocking you know and cells do it yeah yeah by one, by not having it be all extended, they they condense it into chromatin, yeah, you know, with proteins, and then. There's, there's a, have you seen the video of the simulated uh, DNA replication animation? Mm -hmm. you know, where the arm comes in and out. Oh, it's absolutely oh, beautiful. Sounds cool. I don't know how realistic it is, but for me as an amateur, that it looks amazing because it's like complex machinery but it just executes like you said so well yeah it's yeah. so good at what it does yeah 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 and like when you think about i mean you talk about transistors that we make it's yeah a huge error rate right they just they sacrifice a certain quality control to make a mass production but dna can't do that can't it do it no do it. yeah it has to replicate really fast and efficiently and really yep. really well so oh man i'm not doing well Okay, uh, that's fine. Um, In about five minutes, we're going to switch to NARC anyway. Yeah, so. okay. <laughs> that one you can do What's well enough. Edge of the map thing here. Yeah, biology is crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of envious. Like that's the. I've I've published in peptide science before, okay. or not, and it was it was hooking up a uh, peptide with a chromophore on a surface and doing photo induced electron transfer. But that oh, is the extent go. of my biochemical contribution. 
It was one of those things I wish I knew the problems more. So right. I could like, like I'm not a person that's going to come up with a new way to describe something or a new theory or anything like that. I'm going to put, you know, widgets together to make something new. <laughs> like if I knew what problems existed in biochem, I would love to shoot photons at them. And stuff. <laughs> so it's one of those, like, do I need to volunteer to teach biochem to force oh, myself boy. to learn things? You know, that is, that is a big ask. <laughs> it, it, it is, but you like, don't learn it till you have that, to teach that's, it. Right? That's absolutely true. Um, and, uh, I, I, I relearn it every semester. <laughs> so much material. Yeah. So much material. Yeah. Particularly metabolism. And it would just be fun to attack that problem from a, like a naive lens that sure. like, photons are my hammer and everything's in it. Like, what can I solve? What could I give you in cryo EM that couldn't be done without photons? You know, I just, I don't know. Well, maybe the answer is nothing. The, um, the cool thing now is combining, I mean, it's not your type of photons, but it's uh, light microscopy mm -hmm. and, um, electron microscopy. So that gets back to this technique I was talking about with the cellular cryo EM. Mm -hmm. Um, so you put both of those things, a light microscope and a, um, uh, we put a light microscope on this fibsim this fo focus ion beam and um then when you 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 can label your molecules like you can you know make them fluorescent so that will be the only thing that lights up in the cell mm. right so you 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 can you can find it in three dimensions and then use your your ion beam to mill down to it just so you can image just that thing you're interested in and not the rest of the cellular milieu which is you know that's fun yeah so it's it's labeling and targeting uh -huh. particular aspects that you want to see under a microscope that's, yeah 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 at high really resolution yeah, i it's, like that it's and it's 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 the future I mean, that's, that, that's one of the things too, when I see like the bio labeling, they like, like they use the same four or five chromophores for uh -huh. everything, right? It's right. the same color, the same wavelength, the same. And there's such nuance in the tuning that you can do in terms of targeting, in terms of color, in terms of lifetimes. Yeah. Like photophysics is such a developed field that I love to think about that aspect. Yeah. I mean, the getting the fluorophore on your protein is tough right that's yeah. why we use proteins that fluoresce yep. right yep because GFPs, yeah yeah exactly yep so targeting and yeah sorry i've been slightly ignoring the debate on uh synthetic meats versus natural meats but i i'm very curious about that discussion because that was one of those when I did a congressional testimony, the the twenty thirty five, that was like three or four years ago. I talked you about. You did a congressional. I did. I did a Senate and a House congressional you testimony. Were, like you, that's the coolest thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was in front of actual senators. We talked about this with Josh Melko the last stream, but it was, uh, it was me talking about solar cells and how those impact the future. Okay. So the idea was like rather than selling like, oh look, transistor research fifty years ago led to our computers today. They wanted us to portray what the future should look like in twenty thirty five. And so I talked about solar cells and cars, but they're one of the things they asked me about was, you know, if you had to do like a prediction that's outside of your expertise, how the world's going to change by 2035. Yeah. Synthetic meats were my thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> and one of my, one of the people on the panel with me was like a, she was a biology professor from Nebraska. Uh -huh. So like, if you're in the Midwest, you you can't say things like that, but you agree with that being an impactful thing. So it was really. I don't know. It was, a, it was a hell of an experience. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Texas Space Agency, send me an email. We can talk more. We'll set up a Zoom call to talk about synthetic meats because I really, <laughs> I stake my career on this. I am certain. <laughs> I'm excited. All right. I have All not right. been keeping track I have of this a circular, game at all. I, I'm on a circular map here. <laughs> and um, there's some place that I need that see the egg that's above yeah so fun There's factoid something. for people in the audience so this game you can pick being a wizard whatever fight different things kill those things um but this is also a game that is entirely endless 
And the way they do that is after a certain number of levels, they start rotating the level and then putting different bad guys in it. So uh-huh. they just iterate through <laughs> different iterations of bad guys and orientations, and it's a new level every single time, and you fight indefinitely. So the speed runs are effectively who gets to the dragon first, who gets to level X first, and that's effectively it. So yeah, your quarters were never going to beat this game. No. <laughs> In retrospect, how do you feel about that? I loved it. I loved it at the time. I had so much fun. If I could have spent $100, I would have done it. But, uh... <laughs> Right. Can you are you watching do you, do you see any any passes through here? I don't know how to get through here. Yeah. So we'll give you two more minutes. Okay. And we'll oh, how did that guy come from? The guy's probably undefeatable. Yeah, they like to suck all your life away and then they go away. <laughs> oh, wait, I got through. That's the exit too. I don't know Did how. The exit move. Oh, there you go. Just tank them. Just go right through them. You got infinite lives. Nice. Level fourteen. I think you've already. Exit will move. <laughs> All right. It's ten thirty-six. Anyone just joining us? We have Professor Scott Stagg playing Gauntlet 2, the sequel to the immortal game Gauntlet. Um, also answering questions about cryoelectron microscopy, biology, structure function relationships, or pretty much anything at this point. I think we're sufficiently yeah, we're drunk. Okay. We will just talk about the religion of Carl Sagan <laughs> versus uh, synthetic meats, so on and so forth. Oh, Joe Rogan podcast was just invoked in chat. Wow. <laughs> You know, I, I just, I had been sort of avoiding Joe Rogan. Yeah. Um, He's got a platform. He's got an he audience. He really does. Uh, and, um, but I, I did, I, honestly, I, I just read about him a little bit more yesterday. And so I think I convinced myself to check him out. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. He has less of a dogmatic view than I my my than I supposed. Yeah. <laughs> the male Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> uh, oh that's brutal. <laughs> I mean, thankfully Joe Rogan isn't trying to sell his own products, right? He doesn't have a goop equivalent for for, right. for male. I, right, <laughs> right. You're not wrong. Like, what's the? There's something drug he tries to like talk about every time. It's not mescaline. It's something else. I don't remember what it's called. But yeah, I mean, he was the in the male news recently. Paltrow. <laughs> uh, oh, he he does have. Oh, does have supplements. Yeah, well, who does? Yeah. <laughs> who doesn't? The, the Ken Hansen brand of supplements. Everyone should buy them. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Have you ever seen the show Ex- The Expanse or read the series? Hmm, I've heard of it. I have I not either. Anything about it? Is it worth it? A guy doing guy things. Is it worth the uh, read or the watch? He has supplements. <laughs> the male Gwyneth Paltrow is my favorite quote of the yeah. night, actually. <laughs> I respect your science and all, Scott. <laughs> the male Gwyneth Paltrow reached another level for me. <laughs> A TV show I've been planning to watch for about five years. Uh, long format interviews with our contemporary historical figures. Yeah, no, I, I definitely respect he has scientists on. He has yeah, he has the whole you know, gamut diversity in terms of political and social views. I mean, he clearly has an agenda. I guess when he switched to Spotify, he lost most of his audience, and he became. All right. Yeah. It's still super huge, though, right? Yeah, yeah. But he lost like seventy percent of it. Uh, okay. Uh, he also has white supremacist songs. So yeah, I know. I'm not, not, it's not so cool with that, but. Um, yeah. No, but there's something to be said about. That's all why that. I haven't avoided him <laughs> for so long. But um, yeah, there's an exit. A guy doing things recommends the expanse. Either right. reading or watching it. So it's a book and also a movie or something? Um, like it's basically solar system is colonized, Earth and Mars in a cold war. Oh. Ancient alien tech that scientists start to cross with human biology. 
Sounds like fun. Sounds like, yeah. <laughs> My kind of thing. All right. It's 1040. You got to switch. You know what time I'm it is? I'm going to let it out. It's time for NARC. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Narc with Game Genie. Everyone who has been watching the entire stream to see this moment, to, Narc has become our tradition at the end of streams. Uh, it's an absolutely terrible game for the Nintendo Entertainment <laughs> System. It's the war on drugs. As you can see from the car that says just say no on the license plate, clearly it has stopped the war on drugs because it was so impactful to <laughs> our generation of children playing Nintendo. <laughs> so Scott has not played Narc before. I guess he played a little bit, but yeah, this... You have infinite lives. So let's do it. Let's play narc. All right. Let's, let's kill bust some thug. drug dealers. Let's let's kill some drug dealers. Let's try not to get killed by drug dealers. <laughs> this is narc. Cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Press start. <laughs> yep. Um. So for those of you not familiar, this narc game is a byproduct of the war on drugs. Thanks, Ronald Reagan, for producing <laughs> the game narc. Where. So you have two buttons. One. If you hold it, you squat. If you tap it, you jump. Uh, if you and hold the other right. one, you shoot a rocket. Or if you hold it, you shoot a bullet. If you tap it, you shoot a rocket. <laughs> so this is the game we close most of our, our uh, streams with. <laughs> War on drugs means you dual wield assault rifles in a sleeveless shirt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is how we win the war on drugs. <laughs> Man. And at the but, end, you, you uh, discover it's Chuck Norris under the mask. <laughs> so... So when I was at UNC Chapel Hill as a postdoc, I did a, I don't know if you're familiar with these like bar science cafe things where you like go to a bar and you give a talk about science and it's just, oh uh, yeah, audience. I'm familiar. Yeah. So I gave one of them and it was, I was part of a energy frontiers research center that was trying to make solar fuels use light to make chemical fuels. And so part of the talk is introducing that concept, but I did a breakdown at the end of looking at, you know, dollar amounts spent on certain things in the United States government versus the cost of research. And so one was like, if we have 250 F-35s, how many research centers of 80 people can we fund? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, right. The number is absolutely astounding. One yeah, of the yeah. things I said was the war on drugs. And so since the 1970s, it's been like trillions of dollars sure. fighting a war that has effectively been very good at putting people in prison but not good at stopping use of drugs not good at inhibiting drugs coming into the country right it's been a complete waste yeah it's a lot like um abstinence only <laughs> yeah exactly birth control. and so like we could have done dozens of manhattan projects for the price of the war on drugs yes yeah. yep and I, I actually broke down the numbers i don't remember what they are off the top of my head but that's that's the basic idea and this this game is just another <laughs> <laughs> another negative of the war on drugs with that said it's it's not a terrible game it's kind of fun <laughs> no it's a terrible game this is a really <laughs> terrible game wait till you get to the final boss uh all right you all gotta right. ask me some of these questions because right. it's pretty funny <laughs> can you arrest the dog is one of the questions and the answer is no you cannot no, arrest the dog in this game mauled, <laughs> it'll just dog. maul you if you try to walk over it so no i'm glad we can answer that one <laughs> there exists an 85 trans am that was seized from drug dealers uh, and was used by <laughs> used as a dare car uh, and meticulously maintained by police in the uh and then an auction buyer, uh, its existence and that of Betty White is all that keeps me going sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, another byproduct of the war on drugs. Uh, yes. And if weed was legal, would we do an ask a scientist while smoking? Oh, that's interesting. I, um... You don't have to answer that. <laughs> well, so my friends used to have what they call, um... Mayfest, May Wine Fest. It's a fun thing. They would all get together and have a big bonfire and just hang out. It's pretty fun. They made uh, some brownies one time. And these particular brownies, they were very fall apart, fall, fall apart um, brownies. And so, you know, um, I have never been one much for, for marijuana. And, uh, but they're like, you know, we have these, these brownies and like, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try. They're falling apart, right? So, I like, you know, reach in and form this giant <laughs> monolith of brownie. Yeah. <laughs> and it's delicious, right? So, <laughs> and it's like, you know, hours, like two, two or three hours later, I'm like, oh, that's fine. 
And then, like, that evening, time started <laughs> becoming non continuous. Yeah. Like, I was experiencing time, experiencing time in discrete <laughs> chunks. And I was like, this is not, this is not good. This is not something that I'm enjoying at all. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> and uh, I was like, Anne, we need to go home now. And my wife, lover, does not have a lot of uh, patience for, for this kind of tomfoolery. So she's like, fine. Drives me home and, you know, she's like, well, I'll take, take care of him. And she's like, she puts me in bed. And she's like, oh, he'll probably like to watch a movie or something. And what movies does she put on? The Big Lebowski. <laughs> I was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, oh, man. <laughs> that, is, that was my last experience. <laughs> it's uh, worth it. <laughs> it's <laughs> worth it. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing about edibles. They're very deceptive because they're yeah. a time interval uh -huh. and you don't know the dosage. That's right. And then they're always the thing like, oh, it's been like 20 minutes. I don't feel anything. I should eat more. Right. <laughs> that's stupid as hell. <laughs> oh. oh, man, that's amazing. Uh, Cuddly Puppy points out, I think weed is against the terms of service of Twitch. So, oh, well, yeah, there yeah, we go. Unless it's federally legal, that might be an issue. So I do not have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah, Well, we'll get banned from Twitch. But yeah, if you stand on them, you bust them. Yeah. Nothing for you except points. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> the big Lebowski. Uh, Oh, uh, Texas Space Agency. This is a true story. I wrote a proposal for NASA, JSC, that they should grow dwarf cannabis in growth chambers en route to Mars, um, then breed industrial can cannabis on the Martian surface. Interesting. That's a proposal. I mean, if, I doubt you're, living it was on, funded, but... if you're living on Mars, you gotta have something to do to occupy your time, right? Yeah, well, that's true. Alright, let's so here I think you have to kill things to... There you go. So oh, here. Uh, yep, card reader. Did you not get the card reader? There we go. go. <laughs> Scott, what are your thoughts on Narc the video game? Um, it's a great game to play, my buddy Ken Hansen. <laughs> While moderately <laughs> drunk talking yeah. about weed. Yeah, exactly. This is my favorite part about Ask a Scientist is the, the quality of the science and gameplay progressively gets worse through the night. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for anyone that's still sticking around. Welcome to Ask a Scientist Gaming. I'm here with Scott's dad playing NARC, um, talking cryo-electron microscopy as well as um, uh, biology structure function, solving protein structures and how those protein structures dictate things like um, molecular signaling transport across membranes and things like that. Um, I got that sentence out, so I'm nice. pretty proud Good at job. this point of the night. <clears throat> it's going to be interesting in the fall, so I'm not teaching at all right now, but I'm going to still try to maintain this like twice twice a month, every two yeah. weeks or so during the semester. <laughs> so we're going to see. It is truly a non-trivial amount of work. Yeah. Like, I am very impressed with you. Um... But it's awesome. Like, it is, yeah. I mean... So car, go back to the oh, car. Yeah, yeah, right. So you can jump into the car. And you can drive, but you're going to run into a wall, right? Oh. Every time. There's no indicator. There's no... <laughs> you had to go down and then up, and oh, okay. yeah, it's ridiculous. It's a clue. Ooh, Hamsterlicious has a science question. Thank you All for right. bringing us back to science. What kind of stuff do you typically find at the smallest resolution of organic samples? Um, <clears throat> fine. Okay, so... Um... So the the thing that that's, um, uh, you get with resolution is to, uh, right. So with like a protein, you know what um, what amino acids are going to be there, and um, resolution just sort of tells you where the individual amino acids are and how they're all um, put together. 
but when you get to uh, the highest resolutions you can see stuff that you don't expect and that's like where the real surprising stuff is and it's really exciting so like um um so you know enzymes a lot of times use ions or um water as part of their um catalytic mechanisms and so if you can get to high enough resolution like better than three angstroms you can see the waters and see the ions and then you get insight into how these proteins and enzymes are actually um doing their function catalyzing their their the, the you know, bond breaking and making that they're doing so that's when it gets really exciting hmm. how do i get past oh i got it yeah you should you shouldn't pause this, just hold left. <laughs> I was I was just running into the wall. <laughs> um Texas Space Agency, uh sorry I missed the question. Did you ever have a transformative moment or a momentous experience that made you say, Hell yeah, I want to do microscopy? Or did you fall into this discipline? Uh yeah. Um when I was a graduate student, um I didn't have the, really the background for it, but um, what I got really attracted to was this molecular modeling. That's what I did. I was with a, a guy who was a physicist, and he did um, modeling of the ribosome. This was back before the structure was known, so you could you know try to predict, pre do predictive modeling of what the structure looks like. And we had a collaborator uh, who's actually now no one of one of the Nobel prizes for probably um, Joachim Frank. And he had these, you know, low resolution car OEM structures of the ribosome. And it was great because we could apply our modeling expertise to these low resolution um, uh, structures. And it was like, ah, this, this is perfect. It's a combination of uh, experimental science, which is, you know, what, where you know, my heart is, and my expertise with modeling and um, uh, you can, you know, actually see these these structures, and so then when I realized that, that's when I was like, hell yeah, let's! I want to do cryo EM. And you could sort of project at that time. It's like, well, you know, the resolution keeps getting better and better. The electron microscope is inherently atomic resolution, so we're going to get there eventually. So that's what led me to cryo EM. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's some drunk driving right here. <laughs> you, you have lasted longer in the car than anyone in this game. Well, because so I well, realized you can break. Oh, oh, there are bombs on the surface. You should ask me this question because it's funny. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm, um, to, to, to do what's one of your biggest pet pee pet peeves in your field? i.e. nomenclature, lack of controls, what what drives you crazy? Okay. As a reviewer, as a audience member to someone giving a talk, what what's wrong with your field? <clears throat> so I have three answers. <laughs> All right. Um, so one of them, so uh, there are these signaling molecules, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of them's called um, mitogen activating protein, MAP, right? And so the things, the proteins that... Um, regulate other proteins, a lot of times they're called kinases, right? So the regula regulator of MAP is MAP kinase, right? So what do you think regulates the MAP kinase? MAP kinase kinase. <laughs> what do you think MAP regulates MAP kinase kinase? <laughs> Biology labeling is so lazy. MAP <laughs> kinase kinase, yes. <laughs> it goes at least in infinite regression. MAP kinase kinase kinase. Kind of into the fortieth. Yeah, <laughs> and that uh, that drives me bonkers. Um, and that's a standard in the field. That's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, accepted. You should yeah. just keep walking. Right? Okay, just you go. keep going right. Uh, <laughs> is that okay. real? That's the, that is the, real. That is for sure. How real. do they label that literature? They spell map out all K the K K K or K map four K. So there's um, a, there's a there's a K K K version. Yeah, of... map K K K. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I think it's typically map 3K for that reason. 
Afterlicious, um, thank you for stopping by. It's been a pleasure. Swing by two weeks, we'll have another guest. Uh, Justin Kenimer will talk about polymer science. So yeah, thanks for coming by. All right, sorry. We have to go deeper. How many Ks can you go? <laughs> All right. K- kinase to the N plus one. <laughs> that, that was actually proposed as a, um, as a solution to this problem. <laughs> Obviously. Okay. Kinase to the N. I'm glad that exists. Yeah, exactly. All right. So number two of my pet peeves. Um, yeah. uh, you know, Drosophila, right? Mm-hmm. Fruit flies and fruit fly gene names. Yeah. Cutely I don't know the gene names. Drosophila but... gene names. Because they're, they are, they're always cutesy. Like, so there's a gene called hedgehog. Because it, <laughs> it, like, causes the, the flies to have this sort of deformity. It makes them look like a hedgehog. And then so someone discovered there's another one that, that's, like, related to hedgehog. So what do they call it? Sonic hedgehog. <laughs> and... Oh, there's so many. There's like, um, there's like a um, mutation that causes them to not have sexual organs, and it's called Ken and Barbie, right? <laughs> it's funny for sure, but it's so cutesy. So people write Ken and Barbie yeah. in papers, like yeah. that's a that's a yeah, accepted. That's a I could sci finder scholar and find a certain number of papers with Ken and Barbie. Yep. yep. Holy crap. Yep. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So there's no, lots of no, hamster lunches. You are right. You you've earned the the, the ragey mode on this. <laughs> That's. <laughs> so I mean, at least it's descriptive. It is. Right? It is. It's sort of, but it it can be really uh, deceptive too, yeah. right? Because it's not necessarily not always. Sometimes it's just cute and not. Um, so you need to get a silver card. Do you have that? Go back to the left. Oh, I know that know. doorway right yeah. there. Yeah. I'm I mean, so so one of the things I have uh, frustrations about synthetic organic chemistry is is a lot of reactions are named after people. Yeah, right? and there's no yeah. functional information right. in a person name. I don't like, like that. Like you can't even correlate it with some property. So even Ken and Barbie might be terrible, but at least it's slightly s- descriptive of something. Right. right. So, but I appreciate. That. <laughs> oh, man, that's amazing. It's one of those things like you'd love the field to standardize, but it you can't go back. No, after nope. it's after it's nope. been adopted, it just that's true. infiltrates and you're in trouble. So did you get a key card on this? I haven't seen one Check yet. Check one of the doors. You might be able to go through and oh. yeah, kill somebody in here. What are these drug bees? <laughs> There was a paper investigating the link between sonic hedgehog and erectile dysfunction. Yeah. I'm not sure how definitive the results were, but it was funny regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Drug bees. Uh, the sonic hedgehog protein. Yep. Oh, man. That's one of those, like, is it a joke when they try to sneak that in? Like, a, is That the, was uh, jokey. Yeah. yeah. The, the sonic hedgehog was. That hedgehog was not, because it was like, you know, this, these things look sort of hedgehoggy. I think leave. Try to come back. Oh. Oh. One of these rooms, uh, this is terrible. Like, without having a walkthrough, you just can't do okay. these things. So press up, but don't press up too much. Damn, <laughs> drug bees. The drug bees. <laughs> Try a different door. Alright, kill these guys. Murder the clowns. clown with knives need to die until you get a key probably what it takes. Good use of the rocket, by the way. And drug bees. <laughs> you know, I want I want to ask a scientist gaming to become huge for no other reason than NARC make a comeback. I want to see NARC in esports. I want to see speed runs of NARC, because this game is just terrible. Uh, I can't farm with the rockets when I want to. Yeah, yeah. Man, so somebody writes a proposal. They're like, "I want to study Sonic Hedgehog." Yeah, and it's like, not no one, beyond, no one bats an eye. How do you take that proposal? I, I mean, it's precisely yeah. how do you? It it just and you know, people love it. People love that stuff, but not me. Yeah, economists are bad at naming things. I mean, yeah, nomenclature is a non-trivial problem. <laughs> Cuddle puppy, I'm not sure what link you tried to share, but 
Um, yeah, we, we've forbidden link sharing just for spam reasons. If you have a link you want to share, send it to me directly through a whisper and I'll take a look at it and post it. Sorry about that. <laughs> Better than in math where everything is called regular. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. <laughs> As in regular Metamucil, yes. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm optimistic you'll find a card in this room. If I can, I'm gonna use it. I'm not doing good at shooting. It's the tap the rocket. So it's almost eleven o'clock. Keep grinding this, or we can call it quits. You might be out of rockets. Oh, back or just die. Let him kill you. Oh, limited rocket. Yeah, we don't have infinite rockets. I there should probably game genie that. Nice. <laughs> don't seem to be getting any cards. I honestly don't remember what door it is in. Is that nice. it? Yep, that's it. Right. I think this is it. We're on the finals, final spree. All right. Do you have a deadline when you need to get home? No, if boys not, in bed. You should probably commit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I'm in for the... Don't leave me so soon. I don't turn into a pumpkin until midnight. Midnight, since having Is kids... Mr. T? Midnight seems so late. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how, what your bedtime is. you got a nine-year-old, right? Um, my personal bedtime is uh, <laughs> much later, but yeah, his is like um, nine. It's, it's not the bedtime that gets you. It's the wake-up time. <laughs> Regular. I need to have a mathematician on Ask a Stem. Yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, we'll say Ask a Stem Gaming. We'll have a scientist on at some point because that or a mathematician on. It's a very different lens of looking at things. Mm hmm. So here, I think you go left. And you'll find a card when you kill somebody. A <laughs> Bub's bus looks like my kind of place. <laughs> <laughs> it Ian Malcolm on the show, yes. <laughs> Life uh, finds a way. <laughs> oh my god, my two-year-old wakes up at 6.30 regardless of bedtime or time zone. Yes. yes. There's a certain interval. It gets better, though. It really does get better. Yep. For most people, not all people. Yeah, it gets better, then it gets worse, and then it gets better. Like... <laughs> There's, there's, there's sleep regressions. Yeah. And I talked to the developmental psychologist about this. So the sleep regressions and the major milestones. So there's a progression in child development where they get increased mobility, like they can crawl and then they can walk. And every one of those is associated with an intellectual leap because it's an exploration of intellectual space. And every one of those intellectual space explorations is, in, uh, is inherently tied to some sort of sleep regression because they like contemplate their own existence or what? something yeah, yeah it's stuff. crazy like they're, they're, they're all these mental leaps are tied together yeah you get the good stuff but you also get the bad stuff like at some point i don't know if your nine-year-old has talked to you about death but that's oh gonna yeah happen, right and they're gonna lose sleep over that and so like it's this this crazy cognitive development that just goes haywire i'm not giving any so green keep thingies. going left maybe by the door have you tried the mark slash reflection test on your children i don't you know, know what, that, what is. that is is that do they recognize their own reflection oh you're out of bullets, I am out of bullets. you have rockets might be worth dying <laughs> just to get a refresh on rockets and bullets what is the mark slash reflection test? Because the one I noticed was the, uh, I don't know if you saw this progression in your child, but the object permanence, where mm -hmm. like an object out of view doesn't exist anymore. Huh. <laughs> it's the mark test where they start every scene with, oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> Have you seen the room? 
It's a terrible, terrible movie. I haven't actually seen the room. I've seen the Disaster Artist. <laughs> you, okay, so you have a you have familiarity with the room. You should probably watch the room. The scene with Ohio Mark is just landmark filmmaking right there. <laughs> if you make a mark on the face of animals that are self-aware, they will try to remove the mark on their own face in the reflection. Oh, hmm. that's interesting. So some identity of self plus this doesn't coincide with that identity of self. Why can't I get this green thing? Did you get it already? Maybe no, try I don't going... think so. Maybe I should try again. Yeah, try it, see if it's... So that's a self-awareness threshold. That is super interesting. No. Royology, thank you for the bits. Um, yeah, thank you for stopping by. It's Ask a Scientist Gaming. We talk science as well as play video games. Mediocre gameplay combined with expert level science. Today we have Scott Stagged playing Narc. I don't know where this key is. It should be killing those guys. I think you'll get the card. Rheology, thank you for the follow. It's a pleasure to have you. Again, every two weeks from now on, we're going to try to have a scientist on, so join us for future events. Aha, uh -huh, finally. We are coming close to the end of Ask a Scientist Gaming today, uh, but not until we beat Big Boss Man, because you clearly have to win the war on drugs tonight, because, I mean, if we accomplish anything in our lives, it should be this. Really? <laughs> I forget the dude's name, but he got clogged for coming up with that one. I mean, those... I, I love psychology studies. Like, I yeah. really love human behavior. Like, we want to all believe we're unique snowflakes, but really we're just a statistical pattern that we can <laughs> identify where we're going to walk in a shopping mall based on some predisposed <laughs> position. <laughs> are those clowns? Yes. They are yes, clowns murder clown. with knives. <laughs> uh, but not dogs and cats, I agree. Uh, how we know most great apes, dolphins, magpies, and elephants are self-aware. Do octopi if they see themselves in a mirror? Octopuses. So I have this running gag with the materials subgroup in chemistry about uh -huh. not eating, eating octopus. At when we go to like, uh, what's that restaurant on Thomasville? Sakura. No, um, but da, 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 I can't think of the name off the top of my head. They serve octopus as an appetizer. Okay. I'm opposed to it because they're cognitively aware. Right. They're very smart creatures. Question is, if you take an octopus, put a mark on its face, put it in front of a mirror, does it recognize? I, I don't know yeah. the answer. <laughs> Are those clowns? That is the most important question of the night. <laughs> they're very yeah. durable just, clowns. Just, just keep going. I can't. Just keep going. Okay. Well, I figure there's gonna be, I'm gonna, it's gonna be require me to get some key. So now we have Mr. Big International Building, oh, okay. who is the king, the, the lead drug dealer. So now you have to go to the end, use the key door, and you'll just progress through. Oh, that background messes with your eyes. <laughs> Damn it, Jim! I'm an economist. Oh man, I should have an economist on too. Mm -hmm. if, if nothing else, to talk about the uh, GameStop stock stuff that's going on. <laughs> Like, everyone really? on Earth has heard about this. Right. Like, the, the, the naked apes trying to combat big... Bitcoin. Big business, yes. <laughs> economist. I don't know if I've ever had an economist. I'd ask a scientist gaming. You know an economist that might be interested in being an ask a scientist gaming? Please let me know. <laughs> I bet if I put a mark on your face, you'd punch the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. All right. Let's keep hostilities down in chat, but that's still pretty fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I vow to not eat octopus or cuttlefish. Octopus have two-thirds of their brain in their tentacles. I don't Truth. know how they function. That's they're, they're, they're so just bizarre. distributed, like... Man. Yeah. Um, did you watch this documentary? Um, my octopus teacher or something like that no it's not bad um it's this guy who um uh sort of sort of befriends an octopus and it's like a, it's a documentary i think about, you can do the the, the key card you okay do i have it yep um and uh you know it sort of follows the life cycle of a, this one octopus It's it's really cool, and the, one of the coolest things is um, how octopi protect themselves um, from sharks, which are their predators. Well, what's the name of it? 
my octopus teacher or something like that. Um, so, like, if they sent, if they're being chased by uh, a predator, they will like start grabbing shit from all around them, and then pull it in to make a suit of armor. It's the coolest thing. That's amazing. It is amazing. Uh, chat backs you up on this being amazing. I cried a lake of tears watching that movie. Was not prepared. <laughs> it's a great yeah. documentary. Hits you in the surprise feels. Yeah, yeah. Good storytelling. You can't argue with that. There's a ton of debate about measuring uh, animal intelligence. intelligence. Yeah, really? I mean, that makes sense. Like, how do you cognitive awareness? Like, how many of our fellow citizens wouldn't pass some of those tests? <laughs> seen the voting block and I'm questioning you know even human function what's the threshold of intelligence it's like pig I try to avoid pork actually oh, yeah. pigs are pretty intelligent yeah oh so this one you gotta blow up the guy in the wheelchair with a rocket <laughs> oh, oh that's dark that is dark it is dark but he's a drug dealer so it's fine yeah right we've learned that nonviolent drug crimes merit death Apparently, in the United States legal system. All right, come on. <laughs> uh, the reflection test only reflects a certain type of awareness. Then, right, it's that true. pass others. Yeah, like there's no absolute. <laughs> the best part is when you hit this guy in the wheelchair. Uh, it's gonna be great. All right, come on. Ah, oh, got him. There he is. Right. <laughs> right <in spin. laughs> Slides off like a slug. And then he'll be back. You have to hit him twice more. Oh no! Really? Killing a pig was the hardest thing I've ever done. Like, that's something I, I've never had to do. Like, my wife has been part of slaughtering chickens and things like that, like growing up in backwoods Minnesota, but I've never... Wow. Um, Anthony Bourdain talks about it, like, being, like, one of the things, like, you know, in his show, he's done all kind of crazy stuff, and they invited him to slaughter a pig. And he, uh, he talked to him about it being like one of the, by far the most disturbing things he's done. But he did it. He did it. He did it twice. Was, Man, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, the cows things is the other one. Like even, like economics aside, synthetic meats, if we can get rid of that type of yeah, aware sure. creature that we have to slaughter and right. cage. Uh, it's worth it. All right, so you think synthetic meats will will get to like um, texture of like a um, steak? I th I think they are now. They're just expensive, right? I mean, I know the burger stuff. This is Mr. Oh. Big. Oh my god! So you have to jump and shoot him in the head with a rocket. So it's like so hard to shoot. Yes. So you have to tap a jump and then rocket okay. him in the face. <laughs> And he just stays on top of wow. you. Wow. I've seen a lot of recipes around the, the periodical cicadas that emerge. Cicada, in oh, yeah, sure. Cicada meals. A lot, of, a lot of protein there. I mean, that's... So the, there's the, there's this book by Hofstetter called I'm a Strange Loop. And it talks about, like, what is, what is the threshold of cognitively aware? So most of our responses to existence are just feedback loops. Right? It's just stimuli response. So like ants do that, worms do that. When does that become cognitively aware and when is it just an automated loop? And I don't think there's a real answer. It's, it's, How do you... Yeah, it's, it's non-trivial. Do you have to shoot it on the way down? Yeah, while you're falling or while you're on the way up, you have to like catch him right in the, right in the hat or in the glasses. What is he shooting at me? Cicadas. Like, cicadas can't be that cognitively aware, presumably. Alright. <laughs> I don't care what you Tap. think about the environment, but my barbecue will bring you to Jesus. <laughs> if you would have wrote, bring you to Carl Sagan, I would have bought it. <laughs> you might have missed that discussion earlier, Texas Space Agency, but Scott said he wanted to start a religion with uh, Carl Sagan as the deity. <laughs> you got a shot on. Oh, uh, 
Even plants respond to stimuli. That's right. Like, what's the threshold between stimuli response and cognitive response? I, I don't know. Answers. I need to have more development psychologists. On. So that's close. Got to get like right in the hat. I didn't even hit him. You hit him in the face, but you got to get him like in the hat. It's it's such a weird jank. This is a terrible game. I'm sorry I made you play it. What is he shooting at me? It's like his tongue? Yeah, that's that's his tongue. <laughs> I need to make an emote with the tongue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> like when someone says something, you're all grossed out. <laughs> uh, Rheology, thank you for stopping by again. Stop by in like two weeks. We'll have another one with uh, Justin Kenimore, who is a Palmer chemist. You got the glasses off. Keep going. Another hit to the head and you'll expose the skull. Could you Never play apologize this? for Nark. Could you play this without the cheats? No. Oh, really hard. No, I played this as a kid. Like, this is one of those, like, when you went to, um, like, Blockbuster and they had that bin of yeah, games sure. that nobody wanted, this is one of those $5 games that I ended up. It's really hard. <laughs> I want a drug bees emote. <laughs> Yes, the drug bees were a surprise. I don't know that how they got them to do their bidding, but I'm impressed. Yeah, Mr. Big's got... I mean, clearly he's got the technology. I mean, look at him. Giant head floating on some sort of thingy. Oh, and just brutal with these, these blasts. Ah, My I... mom is a psychologist, but one, she's in California, and two, she was never a professor or she was a social worker. Social worker has to be... A different level of dealing with people yeah truly like as teachers we deal with some stuff right and it's it's frustrating at times but that is a different demographic oh i'm about to rage quit this game <laughs> you want me to try to do the hat oh, wait, oh you no. did it all right okay so now you got to shoot the bottom like spinal so just not rockets just bullets oh just bullets okay yeah. so just hold the trigger so you gotta Don't get it like so run away, shoot back at him, hit the bottom spine. We're making progress here, people. Am I getting it? Mad respect for social workers, no question about that. No doubt. <laughs> We're rage. Are we at rage phase yet? Do you need a rage email? Yeah, yeah, I could. I could. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the new rage. Around. Yeah, so run away, get get a good distance, and then just blast bullets into his bottom vertebrae. Okay, so turn around, shoot. How do you tell if I'm hitting it though? Am I getting it? Yeah, you're at oh, the, the point. Points. Yeah. yeah, so you have to like aim up, like you have to move up a little while it's there you go. Killing is fine. So what he's is, getting shorter. What do you suppose quar stands for? I have no idea. <laughs> Oh, we're so close, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for sticking around beyond our normal streaming time. Really? Scott is about to beat Narc. I mean, next time I ask you what's your biggest, biggest accomplishment, <laughs> I, I want that to be the answer. <laughs> uh. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Scott Stagg just beat Mr. Big. So now you go walk through the door. We are done with narc we don't have and a victory here. emote so ethanol we'll say ethanol is our victory emote. Really? <laughs> his skull exploded into vertebrae <laughs> yeah they didn't animate additional uh, additional um sprites for that hamster let's just thank you for the bits it is worth <laughs> celebrating this it's been a long night but i feel like we accomplished a lot tonight. really i really yeah, like this was, this 200 was cc you took out the win by one point Oh, yeah. um, that, that was that was a that was a big moment. Level thirty nine in in Joust, infinite lives, but you still died, <laughs> <laughs> and picked up a lot of gold and a gold card, and now we're about to close out Narc. Ah, wow, it feels good to one that we're on drugs. I mean, I mean, that's it. Like, like Reagan can do it. Yeah, let's do the the pardon of all nonviolent drug climbs. Really. Texas Space Agency has an ATP emote. Look oh, at that's that. Nice. What? What? That's nice. Which stream did that come from? Oh, I get to put my name on the leaderboard. <laughs> oh, fun factoid: if you put ass, it doubles your points. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what I'd expect. 
infinite lives and you still died. Yeah, infinite lives doesn't necessarily mean infinite lives. All right. So I think we're going to call it a night on Ask a Scientist Gaming. Um, if anyone wants to stick around and has a suggestion of people we should raid, uh, please let me know. We've started raiding people now. So, yeah, we can hop over to somebody else's channel, maybe science and technology. Let me know if you guys have someone. Um, but either way, it's it's great to have everyone. Again, thank you for stopping by Ask a Scientist Gaming. In two weeks, we'll have Justin Kenamore, polymer chemist, talks about you know renewable polymers and polymer processing. Um, he'll I don't know what game he's going to play yet, but we'll keep you guys posted. Turns out it doesn't matter for this stream anyway. Um, Scott, it's been awesome having you. Thank you for totally. this journey. Um, Super fun. Any parting <laughs> comments for the audience? Oh, just thanks for for uh, being interested in science and uh, watching us play watching us watching me play games terribly and uh asking fun super fun questions all right thank you all for stopping by again if anyone has an idea of who we should raid throw it in chat right now and we're going to raid them right after i get to the uh offline screen so again thanks again pleasure we'll see you guys in two weeks